and welcome to the Lost Archives. My name's Owen and I'm the Dungeon Master of this ragtag group of heroes and adventurers. Hi everybody, I'm Claire. I'm playing Mira, who's a dragonborn sorcerer, half-red dragon, half-silver dragon. Uh, originally was a bit of a politician and now has joined the adventuring life probably to a greater extent than she ever expected. Hi everyone, I'm Michael. I'm playing Lockie Hobbs, a warforged artificer. Uh, originally was part of a flying castle, but I've since left and resumed an adventure with my now friends. Uh, cool. Um, hey guys, I'm Jared and I play the character of Jin. He is a level 6 law bard and a level 2 hexblade warlock. Uh, I'm currently an associate and ally of the Tempest Guild and I am helping them in their goal of stopping the Queen of Dragons, Tiamat. Hello, I'm Ali, and I'm playing Sharma, the Yuan T. Sorlock, um, who is traveling with the Tempest Adventuring Guild, trying to find the other half of her soul, who is hiding somewhere away, far from reach. Hi guys, I'm Matt, uh, playing Yevon, the uh, sneaky wood elf ranger and rogue, who, after a tragic uh, incident in the jungle with his previous expedition, has now joined up with this lovely ragtag group of adventurers and is uh, looking to see what happens next. Hello! Hello! Welcome to the Lost Archives. If you're joining us live, we just had an in-depth conversation about the Muta Triangle. If you're listening to this recorded, you've got no idea what we're talking about. What I recommend you do is go and check out a video on YouTube called no. Lost in the Bermuda Triangle by a YouTuber called Let Me Know. He's a Swedish guy who does amazing documentaries. Mm. I love him to pieces. Go check him out. Um, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Lost Archives. We're playing Tyranny of Dragons tonight. Thank you, everybody, who came and joined us for Curse of Strahd last night. It was a bit of a tense session. It's been um, been excellent having them explore the Durst Manor, our, um, our homebrew remake of Death House, the introductory module to Curse of Strahd. I'm not sure how many of the characters are going to be sticking around next session. We uh, ended last session on a bit of a cliffhanger and we might be about to lose one character's looking really dicey. There's another one who's not far behind. We've discovered Wait, our what? Time. Yeah, they're already almost dead. Oh, um, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Damn, yeah. dude. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not even like being that guy. I, I'm just doing my normal DMing style. Yeah. I haven't even kicked it up a notch yet. This we, is still just, we, poked, like, we poked the spectre. Yeah. Oh, they, so they, they they had the animated <laughs> animated armor fight and then immediately went and told the the nursemaid the specter of the nursemaid that her baby was dead, uh, which is one of the triggers that will, yeah. So, I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, curse of commission. Yes, spoilers. Go watch that episode. Um, episode Ugh. two is out now. It's up on YouTube and podcast. If you want to go check it out, Curse of Stride campaign is a lot of fun. And I might be having to work on some new character out fairly soon. So make sure you go and check it out. It's, it's awesome. It's a win-win for you, Owen. It is. Well, I mean, I love I love investing loads of time into drawing character art and you know, getting you. I actually really love doing character art. I've been really getting into it. Um, we also have a bit of a surprise. Um, obviously, this campaign won't last forever. In fact, we're rapidly approaching, I would say, probably the end of the campaign, which means that we've got our second campaign for the main cast or the the main sort of like storyline will be probably kicking it off I'd say in the next month or so might even be this year possibly next year don't know but we have now just finished the character basic designs we're going to run a session zero like we did for Curse of Strahd so you guys can actually see them create the nuances and backstories to their character all together but we have classes for each player we have races for each player and we now have character art for each player. So stay tuned. I'll be posting those out on Twitter, ArtStation, and on YouTube posts as we go on, just to get you guys excited and ready to rock and roll. But yeah, we've got the character art all finished. I literally finished the last one today um, during a, um, a bit of a downtime. At the end of the day. So that's all been finished off now. Um, other news to share. Um, oh, Blood Moon last night. For everyone in the Southern Hemisphere, you got a really kick-ass view of the Blood Moon if you weren't looking up at Cloud Cover, which I think Sydney was looking at Cloud Cover. Yes. Yeah. It was a cool, it was a really cool Blood Moon. It was awesome. It, it was Thanks, really cool. Queensland. Yeah. Thanks. It was a fucking yeah. awesome Blood Moon. Yeah, it was sick. And it was in the sky for like three hours. It was awesome. <laughs> I didn't get to see like a great, I didn't get a great, great photo of it, but you can kind of see it there. Just... Just above my building there. Oh, yeah. The orange little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, 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 I didn't I, even uh, try and take a photo. I regret it now. I should have. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get to, I didn't get to see the blood moon last night, but I definitely felt its effects today. Yeah. Because uh, it was very yes. sensitive to that kind of thing, and we had a crazy day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I can imagine. Um, mm-hmm. Somewhat coincidentally, Wait. the Blood Moon is also... I want... Oh, yeah? Wait, what? what's the sensitivity? What's this? What? what was... um, well, it's it's a Blood Moon, it's an Eclipse, so it does things, and children are very sensitive to... So full, full moons, you oh, tend to see a bit of an uptick right. in full people moons, acting oh, a bit crazy. Full on days. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, when things okay. happen in hospitals. Yeah. Just... The, there's actually oh, wow. a really interesting theory I've read into that, and it's actually just to do with literally the sunlight exposure, which means the kids don't get enough sleep. And it's literally just a, it's a lack mm. of sleep issue. And it's because people, not everyone has blockout curtains, especially if you've got kids, mm. you generally don't use blockout curtains on your kids' rooms because kids sometimes you need to work on their sleep cycle kids don't have a naturally awesome sleep cycle so some parents Mm. want to sort of tie their sleep cycle to the natural diurnal rhythm and so one of the theories is that it's literally just exposure to that because it's just moonlight's just reflected sunlight i know crazy i mean i'd be curious (laughs) i'd be curious to know like because i i I reckon daylight savings has a big way in on that as well oh yeah yeah because i remember as a kid like when my kid my parents were like time to go to bed and i'm like it's daylight yeah. <laughs> I'm well, right now. So this Literally this is interesting. So in in countries where the sun doesn't set in winter or stays set, sorry, where the sun sets in winter and doesn't really rise very much, or in summer it doesn't set. So when I was living in Sweden, for example, mm. they have daylight rooms in winter mm. so that people don't get depressed and so kids can have a natural rhythm. So all of the schools have special lights, um, yellow cool. and orange filter lights with UV as well to stop people getting depressed because that lack of vitamin D can trigger a serotonin deficit and actually make you depressed and, and really fuck up your sleep cycle. And I even noticed it when I was there. I found that while I was there, I was sleeping a hell of a lot more during winter. I, I could easily sleep for like 18 hours. And that was like, I, I'd literally wake up in the morning at eight o'clock, go to uni, finish uni and come home and go to sleep at 4 p.m. And I was doing that every day for about two weeks before I was like, wait a minute, this isn't normal. I shouldn't be doing this. But it's it's really amazing how quickly your body just naturally tries to adapt to the, the diurnal mm. cycle, the, whatever the day-night cycle is. Mm. Ooh, that's crazy. Mm. Um, what was I going to say? I had something really. I was going to say something really profound. I forgot. We are off topic. We're off topic. Um, <laughs> oh, Dean, Dean. Well, I, I'm I'm going to go a little bit more off topic, but it's Blood Moon related. Um, somewhat coincidentally, <laughs> the Blood Moon ties in with the release of God of War Ragnarok. Yes, I will be streaming. Uh, of course, I'll be streaming that. Of course, I will be. It's coming out soon. I'm getting it either tomorrow or Friday. I will try yeah. to resist playing it before Saturday when I can stream it. Looks You're welcome. So good. And I will, I will play it on the stream. Good um, also, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's coming out really soon. Archie, who I can see in the chat, he and I are going to be playing through Pokemon Scarlet and Violet together because you can play multiplayer, and we're going to recruit some other people as well, and we're going to be having a load of fun with that. So, That's cool. Didn't really play multiplayer. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah, I'm so hyped for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The the leaking has gone hard this like in the last mm. 24 hours. All the starters have leaked, and it's have you, have you seen the, yeah. the starter the, the leaked starters for the grass Pokemon? So I was I was grass all the way, and then I saw ah. the new one, and I just went yeah. no, because it was like one, it was like oh the, the yeah. starters cool. The second one's like oh the second one's second pretty one cool. And great. You get to the third one, you're like oh. yeah, it's, it's literally like it was it was like the starters like great. Sprigatito, beautiful. The second one, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like yeah. really, like really cool looking. I was like, oh my god, I'm so hyped. The third one, and then I looked and just vomited on my keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah. probably going to be going for Fuecoco now, um, the uh, on fire crocodile, because um, the final evolution looks kick ass, and uh, Archie's yeah. going to go for Quax Quaxley's evolution line, which Quaxley. looks pretty cool as well. Yeah. I was, have, I was having trouble today because all the pri- primordial Pokemon, because like there's there's it's future and past themed so if you go scarlet you get all the historic pokemon and they're all like different forms based on like prehistoric versions of them if you go violet you get all the futuristic forms the prehistoric forms are cooler but i don't want but i want the futuristic i want the yeah so um it's 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 it's, it's a struggle i'll figure it out I'll get, I'll get myself figure out i'm not buying both i refuse i've never once purchased both pokemon games <laughs> ever i refuse to do it that's just giving pokemon my money too much giving pokemon too much my money um, so that's that's off that's off topic. It's the same game, pretty much, with just slightly different yeah. Pokemon. Exactly. And we'll, Archie and I'll trade Pokemon. He's, he's already saying he's gonna he's gonna trade me stuff. He's, he's gonna get hey. me a spare Tyranitar. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate that. Thanks for thanks for that. Tyranitar. Yeah, <laughs> there's a futuristic version of Tyranitar that's just Mecha Godzilla. Like it's actually just Mecha Godzilla. Oh, I don't, that's I don't cool. know what to say. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I didn't it's know pretty that. cool. It's pretty cool. And the Volcarona. Tyranitar's like one really of my cool. favorites. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, although the prehistoric Salamence. Which really cool as well i think it's called like half moon or something like that and it's literally its wings are an eclipse it's really cool um 
we're so off topic. Let's do some D&D. I will, I'll do the introduction, get us into the session. Um, for podcast listeners, you'll notice Raph's not with us tonight. His guest character who joined us for the last few sessions um, sort of wrapped up at the end of last session, so Raph won't be joining us tonight again. But if you really enjoyed seeing Raph, check out Curse of Strahd. He's one of the main characters in Curse of Strahd, one of the main players along with uh, along with Jared. So if, you're, if you enjoyed having uh, Raph along for the journey, definitely, definitely go and check out Curse of Strahd. You'll get to see lots and lots of his characters. He's going to die a lot. Raph, Raph dies a lot in my campaigns. Not not to do with me, he just makes decisions there's, which... There's always one, isn't there? Like, yeah. not really in this group, though. No. No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 have a, I have a guy in my Tomb of Annihilation campaign, and he dies quite often. Oh. Well, is it like he wants to go through a lot of characters, or...? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> well, he just keeps doing dumb shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Gen- generally it's 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 questionable decisions yeah. I, i'll be yeah. honest with raf it's a bit of column a bit of column b <laughs> and 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 and, a, and the very first campaign that he played with me where he died like a few times it was also a bit of bullying from other players too he like kept killing his characters um, anyway, it's what my character would do i'm like yeah, oh, uh, uh, with, my, with, with my friend it's more like i think he gets a little bit of like single player syndrome yeah. And he's like, oh, the, the story revolves around my character. Yeah. I'm going to go do this. Yeah. And all the other characters are like, well, okay. Mm-hmm. So he's like, well, I'm going to go charge yeah, that like... griffin over there on my own. Yeah. Oh my like, gosh. Uh, I've had so many of those characters, oh, okay. so many of those players. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you go do that. Next step, next minute, three golems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. had one of my old campaigns. Um, the that that character burned down a, in the first session. Burned down a library, ran out of the town, and then got eaten by a wolf. That was meant <laughs> to be a. Um, That's uh, pretty funny. Yeah, no, right? That's it, was, it, was, it was it was meant to be like an encounter for the whole party after they left. And, he, and, and, the and he just thing. bolted out and then just. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, it's chat have okay. just said oh we, we don't allow pvp at their tables i don't either now that was what taught me this is like my very i think my second foray being a dm i played dnd for like six months and um i yeah i don't allow pvp at my table either it's one of the one of the big rules and unless it's like unless there's a really good reason for it i generally don't allow pvp at all. as you've probably observed we don't and we don't do it and i encourage it but we have um, drama exactly we like to solve our solve our problems with words crazy yeah though. Uh, I don't think I've ever PvP'd. Yeah, it's it's pretty rare. It, it's it's normally a that character who initiates that kind of interaction. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I'd almost argue if there was one character that was going to PvP, it, like it would depend. Like it would almost mean that there'd be a sh- like a moral shift in their alignment in a lot of cases, yes. and that would mean that like okay, if you're playing like if you're if you're morally shifted off the plane and you're an evil character, like it's almost like you should be an NPC. At that point. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, that's, I, mean, yeah. that's, I kind of feel that way, but I yeah. could be wrong. I mean, that's no, no, no. I, I actually, I actually kind of agree with that. I, I, I mean, obviously, with the way we run, I, I, for those of you who know the, the campaign well, I don't really run um, moral alignment, good and evil, as strongly as I think other DMs do, and I never would change that sort of stuff. I'm more focused yeah, yeah, on the yeah. idea of chaotic and lawful, and then, <laughs> yeah, I, I try not to change alignments on players yeah. or things like that. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't love changing player stuff whenever I can help it. I, yeah, I mean, it I, just depends I, on the I'll actions, use, right? Like, yeah, I, I'll um, use alignment. The only way I use it really is where my character is and what they could be. So, like, as, as the thing goes on, like, well, if my character develops in this sort of way, maybe they'll have a shift from like neutral, like neutral good to like lawful neutral. Or if they go in a different yeah. way, they can shift from like neutral good to chaotic neutral yeah. or those are yeah. like losing that as like plotting of like a, a story arc as things happen mm. that's the only that's yeah. really the only way i use it exactly right. yeah. get yeah. ready for chaotic evil mirror <laughs> oh, well <laughs> we'll see uh, speaking of let, let me do the recap so we can find out what happened to mirror last session <clears throat> The Tempest Adventuring Guild, a group of mercenaries, explorers, and adventurers, has been working to thwart the machinations of a group known as the Order of the Dragon. This cult has been amassing power, wealth, and knowledge in an attempt to perform a ritual which would bring a dark draconic god, Tiamat, back into the world. Our story has been following the escapades of some of the members of this group, Mira, Jin, Loki, Yervath, and Shana, who have finally been able to claim one of the dragon masks required for the ritual to bring Tiamat back. The journey to find this item was certainly not an easy one, and has resulted in some changes to the party. They freed a petrified wizard Balthazar, who's now joining them for the moment. Jin has been able to free himself of the pact with his warlock patron Varus, 
Lockie has been permanently fused with the giant Nexus node they had recovered previously, and mm -hmm. Mira has learned a lot more about her connection with Tiamat. At the end of the last session, Mira put on the blue dragon mask, transporting her soul temporarily to Avernus, the first layer of the Nine Hells and the current prison of Tiamat, who had been eagerly awaiting her arrival. Speaking with this god, Mira learnt her bloodline tied her back through generations to Tiamat herself, and that her dual chromatic and metallic nature was by design. This talk with Tiamat revealed some very interesting information. According to Tiamat, the giants had been planning on taking back their world. The sanctuary they had offered the other races was only ever meant to be temporary. The gods, afraid to lose their worshippers and therefore their powers, were responsible for the vanishing of the giants. And when Tiamat threatened to reveal this secret to the world, she was sealed away as another betrayer god. At least that's how she tells the story. <laughs> Armed with this quite concerning information, the party dropped their new friend Shivers back home and now travel by airship back across the sea. We jump in as you guys are on your airship, traveling over the open ocean, um, traveling from the Shattered Isles back towards Oceania. Off towards the left, you can see land, the beginnings of the elemental states, uh, an area that you guys haven't really explored too much um, or had too much to do with, but the, the home of the Ganassi in Oceania and other elemental creatures. Below you, the sea stretches out, the Imarian Ocean, waves crashing below. But high above, the airship sails across a ocean of blue sky and light spots of white I hand over to you guys. As you're on the airship, I'd say there's been a little bit to discuss. We kind of did a little bit of a quick wrap up last session. After you guys have dropped off shivers, uh, actually, yeah, after you guys have dropped off shivers, get back on the airship and, and be, sort of settle down for dinner. Yerveth and Jin, you observe growing across one of the windows a small patch of green vines. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I yeah. see this though. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's Yervith. cool. Jin, you're no longer connected to Varys. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, that probably would be like heeding what Varys had mentioned about Lyra, and in seeing this little, little sort of, he makes eye contact with 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 the party, um, just kind of glances over. You'll probably notice that Jin can see this. It goes. Oh, he, yeah. I'm looking at like that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, but kind of pick this up pretty quickly and goes. Ah, Jin, you can you can see those vines then. I'll stand up, and I'll sort of walk over and start looking, and sort of expecting it, and then I'll turn to Yerveth and be like, "Um, is this what, is this what you've been seeing? Because no one else has seen this but you. Is this, this is, is very interesting? This is the connection to Lyra. This is how I was able to communicate with her." In, 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 in actual fact, we probably should touch in with her, it's, uh, check in with her. It's um, it's uh, it's been quite a number of days since I've spoken to her last. I think last I spoke to her was in the city of Veluxa. I was trying to see if she could ascertain whether or not there was dragon mask in the city, um, but she told me that there was. Um, but since then, I haven't had contact with her. Um, so just quickly, from my own immersion, mm. sorry, from my own immersion, real quick. So Mira put the mask on. Yes. And are we like in a downtime moment now? So this is after that's occurred. So actually, tell you, tell you what, if you want to do it this we, way, did we actually talk? A bit? We didn't actually. You did. Talk yeah, about you, it, did we? you guys discussed it. Mira took you through what oh, Tiamat. I don't told remember you. it. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. the yeah. Uh, Mira took you through what Tiamat told you. That's why we went a bit over, and then I had to kind of rush Raf's. Yeah. Raph's okay. Character. Sorry. Yeah, you guys talked about. I, I just Mira. forgot that. I forgot that last little bit. I thought yeah. we ended there. No, okay, so we have we have no, just a bit of a on the table. Um, yeah, and I think yeah we dropped off shivers, and now we're yep. on our on our boat. I'm very we're, all, yeah. to we're heading back to Oxenford, yeah. Well, that's all you guys haven't given about. a destination. Yeah, we um, something, given a destination, something else I will okay. add. You guys would have had time, and I'm assuming if you'd had the the foresight to say this with, oh. with not me wrapping up, you have had the time to raid most of the books from the library that was in Zonthal's tower. Um, they are now yep. locked up. They are worth quite a bit of money, according to uh, Leosin. He thinks they could fetch quite a bit of quite a bit of money. Balthazar as well has gone through and kept some of the books for himself. He's taken some of the way and said, "No, I, I would really like to keep this book. This is a, I, I think I could benefit from this." But 
for most of them, they're all bo boxed up in the holds and they are worth quite a bit of money. In oh, nice. addition, uh, Loki. Yes. Griswold has been notified about the Wizard Tower and about the um, telescope. telescope. Oh, the, the telescope. Top. I was going to ask about that, yep. Griswold oh, nice. was very excited to hear news of this and um, actually instructed you to write to inscribe a teleportation circle an unpowered one but inscribe the beginnings of a teleportation circle in the observatory that griswold um, is now going to access later on cool. just a quick little tidbit for everyone oh. i actually have the spell teleportation circle now too oh yeah that's a level five oh. that's cool it could, it could be really handy cool. considering that like Owen has littered the world with a lot of teleportation yeah, circles. Yeah, so, yeah. In other yeah. games, it might not, it might have been a useless spell, but in this one, Makes a lot no, of sense definitely one. not. That so kind of changes though. things, actually, because like where we go, because I was thinking, you know, Palin, but we could just as easily go back to Oxenfurt and then. There's Takes a teleportation circle on the ship already. There's a teleportation yeah. circle in your base as well. Yeah. So yeah. Look, yeah. I, it's like it's like when we're like out adventuring, and if we get into a position where we're stuck. Then it only takes me one minute. It is level fifth level spell, but it takes me one minute, and we can go yeah. to and we, can, and we can get back to the boat and get the, and get out of dodge. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Just, it's just one minute. We have to hold off. Like imagine, imagine if we'd had that when we were in the city. Yeah. Like, oh, we need to get back to the boat because okay. you know, maybe they've got the Nexus <laughs> node, or maybe they've got mm. uh, backers. Yeah. yeah, just go there. Yeah, like, that's a really good call. Um, good. For those of you who might not be aware, this this world is kind of. In the industrial revolution but not with scientific advancement and with mechanical mm. advancement with magical advancement so mm. that's why yep. you're seeing so much things like, like things like airships things like um arcane uh, uses whereas other advancements not so much the, they've kind of fallen a bit behind as, te as technology hasn't been able to keep up with magic the possibilities with magic are far more exciting for the people of Oceania. <laughs> nice which makes sense we've gone that way uh, mm. in, in any case um yeah, magic vines. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Great. So, um, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll sort of turn to you and be like, mm -hmm. so, when when was the last time you actually talked to Lyra? Uh, that would have been back when we were in um, Veloxa in the city. I was asking her Ooh. if she could sense any any of the dragon masks there. You, you must understand, she's. She sees things differently now. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I explained that clearly last time I spoke to her and relayed that information to you. She's, um, yeah. Uh, perhaps we could both go and ask and talk to her. Well, if I'm seeing this now, I think that I very well can. And if anything, this almost might be an invitation of sorts. Potentially. If you uh, want to, I'm just focus your mind and we'll be able to speak to her I, uh, okay I look around there's nothing pressing on the ship I take it no as you have a bit of a look um, you're taking a bit of time talking this through as you have a bit of a look yeah what, it looks like a small green vine growing up through a crack in the window in the galley as you have a bit of a closer look you have a th the plant itself looks a bit odd it's not quite the same as you saw it last it's not oh, this really? bright verdant green it's actually got some strange markings on the leaves and you can see that the tendrils that the plant is grasping onto the ship with look almost like a white mycelium. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yay! Um, just, just so you know. I probably wouldn't think any different of it because no, this is the first time I've ever seen it. You ever, you ever like looks down at it harder and goes, hang on, that's, that's not normal. Jin, when these vines grew last, they were verdant green. They were lush. This seems... This doesn't seem normal. Perhaps Lyra's in trouble. We should, we, should, okay. we, should, we should go to her. We should see if she's okay. No, that definitely. I think that is... Yeah, no, we need to go now, I think, then, if that's okay. This might be more of a plea for help than anything. Indeed. When you're ready. All right. I close my eyes as you have to close as his, yep. and just as he described, sort of try and calm my mind and sort of sort of try and focus on almost like Lyra or something. Yeah. yeah. As you as you close your eyes, place your hands upon the um, 
upon the green stem and focus. You have, that feels very similar to how it did last time for you. This this um, this feeling of sudden connection and, and openness, and then you feel this this pull coming from the plant itself, and this voice whispering, Yaveth, calling out across space, echoing it almost in your mind. Jin, for a moment, it feels very similar to that space where you communicate with Varus sometimes, this sort of demi-plane or this, this section away from the world where Varus exists. But you realize very quickly, this has a very different feel to it. There's almost like a music, a rhythm, and, and, a, and a, a song in your mind as you as you touch this. You can feel this, almost like this wild, crazy joy fill you for a few seconds as you touch this. And you feel, excuse me, you feel your loot on your back, your magical instrument of the bards, vibrate with a sudden strum that echoes throughout the ship. Everyone oh. hears this sudden like strum of notes. As both of you close your eyes and focus, you suddenly find yourselves sunlight beaming down onto your faces, so sort of causing you to open your eyes and squint against the bright light. You're standing in a meadow, brilliant green grass underneath you, wildflowers dotted all around. The circle of trees nearby they look old, covered in lichen and moss, but their, their leaves are still green, the bark still fresh and looking healthy. However, as you turn and look behind you, a section of the forest seems to be decaying. You see large patches of fungus growing across the ground, eating away at the wildflowers. Some of the trees dead and dying as spores drift slowly from the canopy above. Bracket fungus, as large as the airship, growing out of these trees engulfing them. As you see in the background, trees, vast trees growing across this circle. As you have a bit of a look around, emerging from the patch of forest, skipping a little bit, excitedly running up towards you is Lyra. You can see that both of her eyes are green, as they were last time, now that Shana is, is separated from her. Is it, is it green, Ali? Is that correct? Both yeah. green? Yep. Both of her eyes are green. You can see that her clothing has changed a little bit. It looks like she has exchanged some of her clothing that you saw last time, Yerveth, for maybe some more fey, uh, fey style of clothing. Long, wispy tendrils sort of flying off her. And growing on certain parts of her clothing, you can see this sort of mycelium fungus starting to grow across sections. She carries a walking staff that she is sort of running along with. Bracket fungus growing from the top, forming these intricate spirals of, of fruiting mushroom bodies. And as she sees you across this the clearing, she smiles and waves really energetically and then goes, Jin, what it ha, what? How? Um <clears throat> Hello Lyra. Um it has been quite some time. You are looking well. <laughs> I've been <laughs> As I in her completely different appearance. Not, not yeah. completely different. Still, it still looks like Lyra. Just some of the clothes have changed, no. and you can yeah. There's Lyra, she does look different. You, you certainly do look a little bit different to when I met you last. Oh, I've, I've been learning. The, uh... I've been learning so much from the from the Fey. They've been teaching me so many really interesting things about how how plants work and the cycle of, of life and death and the importance of of recycling and and, and renewing nature. I, it's so interesting. I I'd never really learned that much about these things, but it's really really interesting. Oh, so this is this is a healthy thing. This is important. Oh, oh. What, what do you mean healthy? Healthy, important. I, I mean, I've, I've, I've not got a huge amount to do here. I, I just thought I'd use my time appropriately. You know, get a chance oh, to talk I, to I, the Fey. Like, how often do we get to ask the Fey oh, about how to? I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's good that you're learning about recycling and looking after the environment. Um, you need to respect <laughs> your woodlands. <laughs> 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 You're going off on the um, what is it the um, that boat? The sea. Oh, the um, sea shepherd. Sea shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I was, I was channeling some Smokey the Bear, like... Only you can prevent forest fires. Only you can prevent yeah, yeah. forest fires. Yeah, I've, yeah. Been, I've been learning so much. It's been, it's been amazing. I, I, Jin, what, what is that yeah. you're carrying? She points at your back. Jin, as you look behind oh. you, your instrument of the bards is glowing softly. And you can see these waves, almost like heat waves coming off it. This sort of disruption of the air as it, as it sits on your back. You, have, you notice this as well. It's it's almost like that, mm. that sensation of looking at a, a surface of a hot road on, on a very hot day when you can see the, the air around it warping and creating this almost like mirage effect coming off the instrument. That's new, Jim? Uh, this, this is... This whole thing is very new to me. Um, well, Lyra, last we met, you might not have known, but I actually had a patron of sorts, uh, Varus Nightshade. We yes, you, you, see eye to eye, so, yeah. Yeah, so go on. No, 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 sorry, you go. Oh, well, we didn't see eye to eye, so I severed that connection. And oh, wow. now I was able to see your vine. Well, that, that makes sense, I guess, a little bit. That's that's really cool. Um, Thanks. Lyra, <laughs> how, how are things? Um, how Can you still see the world like you could? Before? Yes, yes, in the in the scrying pool, the, the, the Archfey have been, have been showing me. I've been spending a lot of time with uh, with some of them. It's been it's been really interesting. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's there's lots of things going on. There's these sections of, of bright lights in, in some of the, the major cities. Palin is, is lit up really, really brightly. And I and I noticed that you guys you've you you got one of the masks. I can I can see it. Um Palin, is that is that a good light? Is that a bad light? Uh, it's just light. I don't know I don't know if I could like differentiate between like good and evil light? Is that a thing? Right. I, I don't know either. This is all new. The, the, uh, the, the way the Fae kind of explained it is that when you look at things, you're seeing power, concentrated power. It's, it's like it, it, it shines through the, the gaps and you, can, and you can see these sections. I can't make out what things are. I don't know what they are per se, but I've been learning to kind of tell the colour, if that makes any sense, or like the wavelength oh. that comes off them. It's hard to describe. It's kind of more of a feeling than anything else. L Lyra, how, how are the Arch Fae? How, how have they been? Oh, a little bit of getting used to. Um, mm. I mean, oh, I mean, Titania and Oberon, the the the, the king and queen, the, the the rulers of the Seely Court, lovely. I haven't had too much to do with them. They're they're very important people, um, but really lovely. Um, I, I don't understand their relationship at all. They, it seems really like <laughs> tumultuous. I I I don't need, I. I don't really know what's going on there, to be honest. But but some of the other some of the other Archfey have been really lovely. Um, mm. Some of them I've been told to avoid the Unseely Court, but like they change alliances all the time, and so I re don't really know who's part of what at any given time. Like Darm, who is he's one of he's like the son of Titanian Oberon. He was a part of the Seely Court when I got here, but now he's with the Unseely Court, and then I find out yesterday he's back with the Seely Court again. It's really <laughs> chaotic, really chaotic. Yeah, I don't really understand how it works. I mean, from what I understand of the Archfey, they're quite um, well. They like causing a bit of chaos, a little bit of a uh, bit mischievous. I think. Um, yes, yes, absolutely. That's definitely the the, the vibe I've been getting. Um, hmm. Yeah, the, the elves, the, the the elves here are really nice. Um, they like they miss their their cousins, the, those who fled to fled to Nostea. They seem pretty cool. Yes. They're, they're, they're sort of a bit confused why they left. Even after all this time? Uh, well, they say, I mean, it, it's it's really, it's confusing, but like from what they say, the elves fled the Archfey, uh, calling them like, capricious and evil masters. I don't know if I see that per se. Capricious, yeah, absolutely. They're, capricious is the right word, but evil? I don't think I've experienced much evil while I've been here. Hmm. Um, uh, you have an inside check, Pat. Ha -ha, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. It's always it's always loads of fun playing. A you know what? I might insert that as well, actually. Yeah, go on. Sorry, how am I doing, Ali? How is this how Alara would react? Right. Yep. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, 
I'm just, I'm also trying to obviously. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I what, I'm, you know what I'm doing. I'm trying to obviously set up a little bit. And, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, I just got to refresh my. You know, I don't know why it always needs to refresh my DD. I'll go, I'll go with you if it's 14 for the moment. If you get higher, I'll, I'll let you know more. You have a. Lyra is a bit of an optimist. You know this. I got a higher. Traveling with her. 25. Oh, wow. Jin, you, you know this as well. Lyra is a bit of an optimist. Lyra is very much looking on the bright side here. She, she's describing things more how she would like them to be, less how you think they actually are. You, you get oh, the wow. sense okay. that Lyra. There's probably more making, she. Yeah, she, she's making Making the best of a. Yeah. And also as well, Lyra is a very conscientious person. She cares a lot about you guys. She knows that what she tells you is going to affect you. If she tells you that everything's okay, then you'll go back and tell Shana that, and Shana won't be as worried about her. Right. Jin, okay. you know that Lyra is definitely, that there's other stuff going on. It's not all sunshine, rainbows, daisies. Like there's there's a darker side to what's happening here. But she is not letting any of that through. Either because she can't for her own psychology to kind of get through this this time being mm. trapped in the Feywild. She can't admit any of this. Or she's protecting someone else. And from the Lyra you know, she cares very deeply about Shana. Shana cares very deeply about her. You know that you can track a lot of Lyra's decisions <sighs> and behaviors back to protecting Shana or trying to look out for Shana. Yeah. Would that be fair, Ali? Do you reckon that's cool? That's cool. Um, I look at Lyra. So, to get this through my head, are you, um, are you here now? Or are you, are you, a, are you like a, like flesh and blood? Or are you more of like a spirit? What happened to you after um, well, the last spirit. time I saw you was at the ziggurat. Yeah, m more of a spirit. I, I'm, I'm not really flesh and blood, so like I can't touch things. Like for example, she reaches down and you watch as she puts her hand through the leaves. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there is there are some things I can touch, like my staff, for example. This this is a special staff. Like I can I can touch this, um, but that's only because I've I've infused some of my power into it. You know you know the spell shillelagh. Um, I have heard of yes. it before. Yes. Yeah. If if I if I focus my energy into it, I can I can I can pick this up, and I can do that with a lot of natural things. If I if I push Shillelagh into it, that kind of infuses it with my energy and lets me touch things. But for the most part, no. I, I'm a spirit here. I'm I'm sort of a an echo. Is what the is what the Fae call me. This is right. this is complicates us on our end, Jin, to try and re get her back. You see, we need some sort of host, some sort of body, I believe. I think that's what Shana is working towards as well, but we haven't quite worked out the details of that yet. It's one thing to bring her back, but without a without a, a physical body, it defeats the purpose, right? Yeah, yes. Siorglis, Siorglis, who I've been spending a lot of time with, she says that I, I'm sort of like a Cory spirit now. Once I kind of explained what shana was and how shana came to be bonded with me it's kind of like we've swapped positions in a way i've kind of become the cory spirit and shana's become the living the mortal body she she's now she's now in the mortal body and I, i'm not quite sure how to reverse that siorglis didn't really know how to do that either she she's been the one teaching me most about like the really cool things about fungus she's like the she's like the arch fae of decay She's really lovely, though. Oh, that's oh perfect. <laughs> She's so yeah. nice. She's so nice. Um, so this, this the the the, the archfey and stuff. Um, so everything's been going fine for the most part. Yeah, Re really, really good. No, no problems here. Uh, do you oh, want to do sure. inside twenty-five before you, you know that that's not? Is is there happens. any? Is there anything that you, you know, look, obviously everywhere you go, there's always the good and bad is, you know, is there anything that we should know? Um, whatever you're planning on doing with the ritual, now you've got the dragon mask, be really careful. And she sort of leans in and lowers her voice a little bit. There's lots of eyes looking now at the 
at the site, it's not just you who figured out something else could go through. Ooh. Um, Lyra, has Dalen made contact? Dalen? No, not for a while. I, I spoke with him, um, probably right after you left to go to Chiari, but I've not been able to contact him again for a while. I've been a bit worried about him, to be honest. Hmm. So am I. I was hoping he might have checked in so I could see where he was at. I know that he was... He had business in the north, I believe. Wait, is that the guy that we met after the second council he's meeting? The, he's the ranger who works with the Emerald Enclave, um, who ah. disobeyed orders to find that, that Nexal node that, that Loki now has. And you watch as she says that, she sort of pauses for a second. You guys have no memory of this. Loki, like, Loki didn't find the Nexal node. That's not how it because with Loki's fucking about with time, that's not how that happened anymore. Loki has oh. always had this. Oh. So Lyra first contacted you to get Dalen to assist you in locating the masks. That's now how you remember things. At no point was the Nexal node ever mentioned. So Wait, she's, I... Yeah, because... But only Yervith would know this, right? No, and everyone who was affected by Loki's time fuck up um, now thinks that because yeah, Lyra so is separate from this entire she's reality, right? She's not there, yeah, and time works differently yeah. in the Feywild. Wait, what do you mean? The the core that, that I helped Lucky find, the, the item of power. I thought it was a mask. I got, I got I got Dalen to go find it and bring it to you guys. lucky has been carrying it around Wait. in his chest for a bit. It's like no, we, with giant runes. We we haven't. I, I haven't seen him since the council. Yovith? When was the last time you saw him? About. He never came and gave us the, the core. No, Loki's always had that call. What? The whole time we've known, like, so out of game, yeah, yeah, my yeah. mind. The whole time we've known Loki, he's had So now, now this, since this version's happened, yeah. he's been traveling with it the whole time, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Time travel. <laughs> yep. Nice. Yeah. Um, no, he's, yeah, like you have said, he's, he's had it the entire time. Um, Lyra, are you okay? Is, is the decay decaying your brain? <laughs> That shouldn't be happening for- no, 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 don't, no, don't be silly. Wait, That's not how that shit. works. <laughs> you sort of said that shouldn't be happening. Hmm. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> um, in, in any case... Um, I guess lighting Lyra. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> is there <laughs> anything you would like us to pass on to the team, and especially to Shana? Is there anything you need us to carry along back to them? Um, she leans in again closely. If your plan was to try and bring me through the portal, know that I won't be the only one coming through. And she gives you a very wide-eyed look. Oh, damn. Damn those fake. Damn those fake. <laughs> uh, what Lyra. Mean? What are you talking about? What have you promised? I haven't promised anything. I'm just letting you know that the opening to make room for Tiamat I'm not going to fill that. There will be room for other things to potentially try and come through. And she oh, looks these... at you again, very wide-eyed. <laughs> I sort of like, almost like mouth the words Archfey. <laughs> yeah. She nods. Yep. <laughs> oh. Um, how, how, how good or bad would that be? Um... The Archfey have been so lovely while I've been here. And then you watch as she, like, again, looks at you very wild-eyed. Wild -eyed. <laughs> wide-eyed. You, you know, just kind of rolls his eyes and goes... Mm. Oh. Okay. Have... Uh, Lyra, bef before we leave, have the Archfey spoken about any of the gods again? You, you mentioned that they spoke of them in one of our first meetings. Yeah. So they... that they were able to... Con sense them or, or know of their, their surroundings. Yes, yeah, they, 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 they've mentioned the gods a few times. The, they, the way they talk about them, it's very dismissive. They, they, they don't really see them as gods. They see them as powerful entities, but not really divine. 
I'm not very religious, so I don't really know much about this. I don't know what the difference between a really powerful deity that creates stuff and a god is, but they they seem to see a distinction. Some of the some of the gods they they talk about with reverence. Anam, they they talk about Anam, the All Father, with with great reverence. They see him as a true a true god, a true creator, but they say he's been gone for a very very long time. The other gods, not so much. <sighs> they said that they're that they've made a pact that they're not they're not supposed to interfere anymore, but that some of the gods are kind of working against that, and they are interfering more and more, and that the other gods um, don't know this. Do you know what gods that would be, or I've heard a couple of names. Lysander, the goddess of the sun. I hear she's been interfering a bit recently. Oh, how so? Giving out hmm. blessings, trying to recruit followers. That's all I really know. That's all I've really overheard. Ah. Uh, I like that. That's cool. Lysander. So I've that's, I've that's... gender swapped. I've gender swapped Lysander. In, in, um, with with Lavender, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. funny because my god, and my my character in um, in Curse of Strahd is a follower of Lysander. Yes, oh, is. that's what it is. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Lysander, yeah. There's, a there's a link. There's a link. Yes, yeah, there is. Okay. A very okay. strong. Nice. Yeah. It's a multiverse. Like no, <laughs> it's, like, it's, <laughs> it's the it's the uh, the Lost Archive cinematic universe. <laughs> is <I love> it. <laughs> Dream Team. <So good. laughs> Wasn't Azua, Azua and? Uh, not, like... they're not. They're they're actually from the Feywild, so they they're don't follow them. any of the Nostean gods. That's right. Azua, 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 Azua like worships the the concept of the sun, but not yeah. Lysander. He doesn't, he doesn't give a shit about Lysander. Okay, that's where I'm getting that from. Okay, sorry, putting my Azua putting calls my... upon his own inner light. <laughs> he has no yeah. need of a god for that. Um... Yep, that's true. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just okay, connecting so... my um, red string together. Don't worry about me. Yep. It'll be up on the wiki later. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so if if you were planning on doing that, maybe there's other avenues you could look at. I can see that Shana's been lit up really, really brightly for a little bit now. Since you guys were in Oxenfurt, like she's still carrying this power within her. Uh... I, Look, I hear that power to can ask. be used for a lot of really cool things. And it, and if, for example, you were able to find some items potentially to channel it, like you know how Loki is a construct, and yet he has a soul, and he's like he's walking around, and he, maybe there's something like that you could do as an option. Like. We do almost like you know how golems are created. Yes. I. Well, I mean, I don't actually know how they're created, it, but like I know about golems. But like I mean the same. Could we fundamentally do something like that, where you sort of enter this being and then your soul inhabits inhabits it, and you're able to, I don't know, like something like along those lines. Jin, can you make me an Arcana check? Yeah, look, uh, I don't know Lyra's much gonna go. About. I, I I don't really know a lot about like golems and stuff like that no I, I didn't i don't i don't know seven. much either yeah jin you're not sure maybe maybe something you could talk to Loki about later <laughs> mm, yeah um do you have any items because you, you did mention items do you have any examples she sort of looks around sees something in the tree line you don't see shakes her head vigorously no i'm sorry i, I don't really know of any items that i could help with okay Maybe it's best just to just get me through the the portal when when it opens. I reckon just do that. That's the easiest way, right? Can I use my insight from before yeah. to win a roll? Yeah. Can I put, can, I, can Yerveth try and see what that what what's in the tree yeah. line? Make, make me a perception check, Yerveth. Um, Jin, she's changed direction very quickly because of something yeah. she's seen. Yerveth twenty eight. One of the trees in the tree line is not a tree. It's a creature that looks very like a tree. You can see a long body comprised of what looks to be wood and bark, leaves growing out of it. 
but it has a very humanoid looking face, a beard comprised of grandfather's whiskers, this long flowing bristly oh. um, lichen like plant. Um, yeah. And you can see it's watching very closely wow. at what's happening in the clearing. That's crazy. Yeah, this is probably like, on one hand, he's kind of like worried for Lyra because obviously he, she's changed uh, topic really quickly and now mm. like, you have a spot in why. But on the other hand, like having an affinity with nature, you have this kind of like, oh, wow. <laughs> I would That's say... A That's a tree man. That's a tree man over there. <laughs> say, yeah, but do you want to roll me a nature check? Hell yeah. With advantage because of your perception. 18. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but Vantage. You know Vantage. what this is. This is a treant. Oh. Yeah. Which I have met once yes. in this campaign. Very Back rare. In the jungle. Very, very rare on Nostea. Not many wild places left where treants still roam. Especially on Oshia. Um, but yeah, this is a treant. A very old one. A very large one, yeah. I tried to contain my excitement. <laughs> um, Jin would have noticed the shift. I don't know about the treant, but you noticed the I, shift I, in, in just the moment she shifts. Like that's hundred percent. Like okay, something is here. Something's changed. Something is now like sort of exerting some pressure yeah. on her or force. Yeah, that's just gonna look at Lyra. <laughs> well, I think that's all. I um. We should be heading back. I, uh, I bid you a farewell, and I hope that you maintain, uh, you continue to en enjoy yourself in this wonderful oh, I'm, place I'm, I'm, amongst I'm so, the forests. I'm so sure that I will. It's it's lovely. It's going to be such a shame to leave all this behind me. And you watch as she suddenly looks again. You know, this time up at the sky, and as you look up, you see a figure descending from the clouds. Uh -oh. A woman, <laughs> long flowing green dress, raven black hair tied back into a myriad of braids, pale white skin with bright green eyes. And you watch as she slowly floats down. And as her feet lightly step onto the grass, you watch as the wildflowers around her feet immediately bloom, growing larger Whoa. around her. Lyra goes very still and then bows very, very deeply. Titania! What a surprise! These are my friends. I think. I think like the moment Yovis know, basically just puts his head on the ground, like on the floor, because <laughs> that's how much he's like bowed. I probably would be like, I probably would read the room, and I would also like deeply bow, because this is not just some normal person you just see on the streets. No. You can. S <coughs> excuse me. You can. S <coughs> I'm dying. You can see her dress. As it touches the ground, begins changing colour, the white bleeding into the colours of the flowers around her until it melds almost with the earth itself. Oh. And then as she steps forward, it drags behind like her, my leaving, a carpet, <laughs> leaving a carpet of wildflowers behind her as she walks. She steps towards you all very regally. It is so rare that we get visitors to our realm. Lyra, you did not tell me you were expecting company. Um, I, I wasn't expecting company, Great Queen Titania. Um, uh, Yervith and, and Jin, these are, these are my friends. They're the ones seeking to, 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 um, help get my soul back to Nostea. Oh. Um, just quickly. So yes. I'm just going to pop in real quickly. Yeah. So she was talking about King Oberon and Queen Titania. Titania. Oh, okay. Of the, of the ceiling court. <laughs> so important that she doesn't talk to Lara much. Okay, cool. Sorry, continue, Owen. I wonder what's changed to make Titania take an interest. <laughs> Titania sort of looks down her nose oh. at each of you. There's a bit of a cold look in her eyes until she turns her gaze to Jin. Okay. <laughs> it is rare that we have had such an item of power enter our realm. An instrument of the fame. Shit. Oh, that's what it is. Huh. Um, yes, lovely to meet you, um, Queen Titania. Lovely to meet you, yes. My name is Jin. Um, apparently, the owner of this harp. 
from the Fae Wilds. So I'm sort of like in almost like Wonder Man <laughs> too. The Anstruth Harp has no owner, merely a muse to help bring forth its wondrous melodies into the air. Please. That is why I said apparently. <laughs> you are a musician, are you not? Yes. Um, apparently, it was quite a. I was able to play the harp even without being um, attuned to it. Apparently, that was a bit of a feat in itself. Indeed. Come, waste no more time. It has been so long since we have heard an instrument of the Fey ring true in the glades of old. Play us a song, Jin of Nostea. <laughs> um. Yes, of, of course. <laughs> no problems at all. Your grace, I yes. take it? Um, yes, Jin. Play us a song. What, what kind of song do you play, Jin? <laughs> what do you play? Okay, um... You play the greatest song in the world. Even though yes! I play, I play tribute. I play tribute. Oh, to oh, that's a tribute. <laughs> and then you forget it all, you because it all. time's weird in the favor. Yeah. yeah, that actually, yeah, you do. Perfect. Let's yeah. see what his performance check is. If you, could, if you roll a nat 20 on performance, yes, that's exactly what happens. Yes! <laughs> okay. Um, so first off, first off, what are you playing? What kind of what style are you playing? Like a tavern song? Are you playing something a bit more courtly? Are you playing a simple folk song? Are you playing a very complex melody? Oh, uh, look, you we're going with a complex melody. This is a queen. Okay, I want to show off. <laughs> okay, nice. Make me a performance wow. check, please, Jin. You, I just took expertise in performance as well, actually. Nice. So. Because Jin hasn't really played a lot of music before. No, I didn't really play him as he was more because he was going the whole like spy route with yeah, um, yeah. the Harpers with with the, with the Harpers and the with um, yeah. and with Varys. So like, but do you know what's yeah. so weird? Jin is now a Harper. This is the Anstruth Harp. He is legitimately an actual yeah. Harper. Yeah. Now. Legitimately yeah. a Harper now. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do a roll. Oh, amazing. Um, did Larry give their full name? Uh, what do you mean, Ali? Can you say full mm. name? Yeah, what? It's pretty good! What she introduced to It's that. only... It's an 11, Jin, though, I rolled. It could have been better. But nothing thank more. God for the 13. <laughs> That's pretty 24. good, though. 24. Thank God for the 13. Jin, 24 is not bad. What style of song are you playing? Uh, look, I'm trying to do the complex melody still. Okay, something really complex. There's like a bit of like an elven... It's probably more from like an elven ballad or something, though. Yeah, because okay. Something she's elven. giving off like... Sort of giving off those more like... Oh, I'm not going to yeah. play a tavern song for a queen of the Archfey. An elven ballad, you say? Something along those lines. Interesting. Okay. At, at least like that sort of like that vibe. Yeah. Jin, as you, as you focus on the harp and begin playing... The harp, as it was presented to you, I mean, you were told this was a, an instrument of the the dragon kin. This is this is a famous draconic harp, and it is. It's, it's got dragon scale motifs. The the ends are, are open dragon mouths. But as you begin to play, you watch as the harp shifts between a myriad of different forms, not physically changing, but changing the sort of outward appearance of it. You feel like you're not just playing one harp. You're playing the infinite varied forms of this harp. And in this place, in the Fey Wild. You are playing the soul of the Anstruth harp. Across all the multiverses, the harp manifests itself in various forms. This is the harp, the Anstruth harp. And as you play, this beautiful melody fills the forest. You watch as emerging from the tree line, Yerveth, creatures begin to draw out into the light. Satyrs, centaurs, ents, various fey creatures emerging as from the shadows to listen. And as Jin plays this beautiful song, this complex movement, rising up into this very elegant crescendo and then dropping into this very mournful, slow tune in the middle that then recovers, you watch as the emotions of the Fey around changes with the melody. As Jin plays this rousing rendition that his fingers moving over the harp like liquid, the Fey begin dancing around, the light grows brighter, the weather clears and it feels alive electricity in the air you know what then, yeah i'm going to make it even more because he's a performer he's an actor yeah. i'm gonna do a major image to start like like i'm gonna do like a spell i don't know like if i can like 
just to weave it's it through. It's going to be hard to major image at the same time as playing the harp. So it's not going to be super complex. It's not going to be super complex. It's not going to be like yeah. a big image. It's going to be like almost like I'm doing like little things that like make me even look more magical and like okay. more like it's just more like to heighten it to like, yeah. like more bring it in. Yeah. It's more theatric. It's not about yeah. being the big display, but it's about yeah. en enhancing it even more. Like if it's a 24 now, like this. Yeah. is going to make it even like more like beautiful and yeah. just like so, so for instance when you when you're playing a really rousing bit almost you can hear backing music because major image you can create sounds as well can't you or is it just mm. visual i have a quick breed i think it might maybe it's just visual but but so like the light shines on you, you you're lit by this inner light your your clothes it seems completely real including sound smells yeah. and temperature okay. appropriate to the then, then a whole orchestra wow. joins in around you I'd, I'd i'd say then that it's a whole orchestra joining in with oh. you as you play this harp oh rising and falling as as you play the mournful parts the light dims around you your clothes sort of change into this long flowing gown around you as if like a more a mourning creature crying over their lost love and then discovering that their love is alive once again the brightness coming back in your clothes changing to this elegant cape and tunic the instruments rising around you you watch as a single tear as the last note rings out across the glade a single tear rolls down to tanya's face Damn. 24, I'm giving you ah. a plus two for your addition of the major image. I will, I will also yeah. add, yes. because it is an elven ballad that yes. you're singing, Yev is also crying. But you know why. Yeah, you over the air, you're swept <laughs> over the emotions of it as well. It resonates with something deep within you, especially here. The Feywild yeah. is, a, is a plane of emotion in a way. Wild, chaotic emotion. And you, you feel there's something within you, even though you've never been here before, really physically, you've never been here before. It's, your it's people really haven't lived here. Yeah. Yeah. You know that you're yeah. from here. This feels yeah. a bit like a home. Yeah. Yeah, as that last note rings out across the glade. I just realised I'm Fae as well, technically. Yes, you are. You're a Fae creature, changing yeah. as a Fae creature. Yeah. 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 I took Damn. that into consideration, don't worry. If, you, if you'd not been a Fae creature, Titania would not have been pleased about you carrying a Fae harp. Let me, let me put it that wow, way. Wow, I didn't even think of that. Yep. Whoa. <laughs> I did. Don't worry. Nice. <laughs> Shit. A single yeah. tear. And not, and not a bard? <laughs> if, you, if you'd had warlock levels for this, this would not have been good. Let me put it that way. Yeah, we would have, no, we would have no, seen yeah. you as a corrupted, fallen, way, waylorn. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, a single mm. tear rolls down her cheek. And as she looks down upon you. That was... Her voice cracks a little bit. Beautiful. What made you pick that song? I, to be honest, it just, it just felt right being here in this place. That, it that almost song like you a, chose. Yes. It's familiar to me. I don't know where I've heard it before, but it's like you've unlocked a memory in my mind it's almost like someone close to me used to play that song when i was a child yerveth titania looks over at you i used to play that song for my child when he was first born Dan, what patron of satyrs travels this this land has grown away from me has grown up this song reminds me of the joy and the sadness i have from remembering him as a child as my child jin when i first sensed the power of the harp entering i came to take it from the unworthy hands that had claimed it oh but i see <laughs> but i see that you are worthy to carry the Anstruth harp for the time being. As long as you devote yourself to the passion, the wild energy of the music that shapes the weave, Anstruth harp will be yours, and you shall bear my favor. She leans down, Jin, and plants a single kiss on your forehead. Whoa! Damn! Damn! <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, Jin. Warlock, tell us back, dude. Jin. Yeah. Jin. 
<laughs> you have a very important choice ahead of you right now. You can choose to regain your warlock levels with Titania as your warlock Whoa. patron. Or, or you can choose to gain two bard levels now. As long as you remain attuned to the Amstruth Heart, you will keep these levels. If your attunement to the heart breaks for any level, you know inside of yourself that you will not only be stripped of your bard levels, all of them, you will lose any ability to play music ever again. The Fae giveth and the Fae yeah. taketh away. <laughs> wow. For if you That's are not playing shit. in Titania's name, you will not play at all. Wow. I feel like <laughs> you've been claimed by a fae. <laughs> so. yep, yep. I feel like I feel like this point. So, damn, he's definitely <laughs> turned more to the because it was like obviously. She might even say that as loud. As long as you yep. play this instrument, you will have my favor. But if you are to play for another, or the instrument is to be lost by your hands or damaged, then you will lose all ability to play at all. Fuck, damaged. Oh no. Well, That's extreme. at that point, if I screw it up like that, I feel like I would sort of hold myself to that standard, and on those terms, I think I accept. I will take two bard levels. Jin, you may level up, you may level up two bard levels to rejoin the rest of the players at level 12. Hell yeah. Perfect. Because I think in his in his uh, in his thinking, I don't think he would want to be. Because if I got to warlock levels, it would make me a lot more like indebted to it, like a patron. Yeah, I, and I'm he doesn't right want to fall back. Yeah. <laughs> Never yeah. be controlled he, again. He doesn't yeah. want to fall into that. He would rather live and die by his options and he like his choices. Yeah. So. He would rather lose all his bard levels and not be able to sing again if that meant he would never be under someone's That's like. That's cool. You know, be, un be under someone again. Jin, as this kiss on your phone, as you accept this deep within you, that the location where she kissed feels warm and tingly on your forehead. Yerveth, you watch as a wave of green energy sweeps across Jin's form. Jin, your changeling shape, for a few seconds you lose control of it and you watch as Jin very quickly flickers, feathers growing, taking way into stone skin, making way for humanoid skin as, it, as he flicks over and takes on a myriad flickering forms like a kaleidoscope before settling back in his changeling form, the white-skinned oh. form with the yellow eyes that you've not really seen before, you have not oh. And then Jin yeah, regains control <laughs> of it and then change yourself back into Jin, I'm assuming. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah. Titania yeah. nods. Now you are my muse. Go play music, make joy, tears, sorrow, and laughter. And when your time is done, you may join the court of the Fae as one of our musicians, if you so desire. Ah, oh, well, look, this is all I've ever wanted, really. So yeah. it'd be good to finally just relax a little bit and just play some music. When I heard that song that one time, it just gripped me, and that's why I became a bard. So to, to sort of wield such an instrument is definitely a honor. Indeed, a great honor, and one which requires you to compose great music of your own. You play others' work beautifully, but now you must compose in my name. For after you are gone, I want people to know of the music that you created, with my blessing, my muse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would. I think I would bow there. Lyra like gives a little. I'm squeak. definitely caught. I'm definitely caught in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 100% caught in the moment. Um, every the conversation with Lyra, where she was like giving mixed signals about the Archfey, is just out the window right now yeah. because this is this is a scene. Oh, oh, oh man, you're getting you're getting everything you ever wanted, Jin. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lyra sort of squeaks, goes, "Oh, that was really beautiful, Jin. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, my queen. I, these two are so busy trying to trying to get the the ritual all, all complete. They've they've got the dragon mask." 
Titania looks down. Excellent. Then all they need is to disrupt the ritual, and you may go home, my dear. Yes, and I'm sure they've got a lot to do. I, 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 isn't that right, you two? And then she looks at you <laughs> with oh. wild eyes. Oh, of course. Crazy. Yes. I have a lot. I, uh, uh, it would be a shame to leave so soon, but no, we do have pressing matters back on Mastea. Indeed. Farewell. She gives Jin a little smile, and then you watch as she opens up her arms, her cloak and, and her long dress detach from the ground, the grass sort of giving way, and she rises up into the air, actually just floating up. Um, you watch as the ground where she'd been standing that had bloomed into this beautiful display of flowers, without her there to sustain it, slowly begins to wither and die, falls on the ground. Wow. Oh. So are we are we still with Lyra or are we back? Ly- on yeah, Lyra. Lyra's there, and and Lyra sort of gives you guys a bit of a, a bit of a nod, smile. Good luck. I sort of wave awkwardly around as well at all like the, <laughs> the other creatures. <laughs> like, still there. Oh, yes. A, a Sati, a Sati <laughs> like stomps his hoof a few times and gives you a little bit of a look and then a cautious wave. And then with <laughs> Titania now gone and the music ended, they melt back into the forest, disappearing from view. Oh, well, I could have done another tune if you wanted, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, Perhaps we're gonna, you're going to leave them waiting, Jim. I'm sure they'll come back. Oh. Of course, yes. Always living more than more. Well, um, so for her, for me, tell me, tell her. It's really confusing <laughs> sometimes. Tell her I'm doing really well. Um, and I, I can't wait to see you guys, hopefully in person, really soon. And remember what I said. You will. Stay safe, Lara. You too. We'll see you. So- we'll see you shortly. Will do. Yes. And then she goes to kind of like wrap you guys up in a big hug, and you can you can feel a bit of the pressure as she as she touches you, but she feels very light, very incorporeal as she as she holds you both in this big bear hug. She has to jump up a little bit to do it because you're both a bit taller than her. <laughs> holds you this big bear <laughs> hug, and then let's go. Gives you guys guys a bit of a wave, and then runs back off into the forest. And the vision ends as you guys begin falling back asleep, your eyes closing, and you whoo, wake up on the ship. Jin. You're holding the harp. Everyone on the ship, you heard Jin playing this. Jin played oh. this not just oh. in the Feywild, but here Whoa. as well. Whoa. You did cool. say all, all the multiverses that yeah. the harp was playing. Lyra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Mira, Loki, Shana, mm. Leosin are all standing there as you guys open your eyes. <laughs> Leosin looks at the harp and goes, that's, that's not what it looked like a moment ago. Oh. It's different now. What are you two doing? Um, hi. We contacted Lyra again. Yes, uh, but I actually went along this time. He, oh, because Jin can now, apparently. Apparently so. Oh wow, that's that's kind of crazy. And you used music to do it? Is that how that works? Uh, well, no, not not necessarily. Um, usually Lyra. Reaches I just out. sort of. I probably sit there a little bit smugly, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just played a concert for the Queen of the Archfey, but nothing to, nothing at all really big or anything. Um, t- t- Titania, Titania was, was that a, yep, yeah, do you know her? I'm looking around. Oh, uh, Leosin might. Well. Leosin goes wide-eyed. Leosin goes wide-eyed, Leosin goes <laughs> wide-eyed and then looks at your harp again and goes, she's, she's marked that. She's, well, she's, um, right. Okay. Um, apparently guys it was get always up to the weirdest stuff when I'm not around. <laughs> Look, all I wanted to do was talk to Lyra. And this is the stuff you've caught us doing. Oh, poor Leo. <laughs> that's a, thank you, Lucky. It's a really good point. Um, um, what you do in the privacy yes. of your cabins is your choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jin, your harp has changed. The stem no longer features dragon signatory. It's changed dramatically. Swirling vines and leaves now mark the harp. And you can see a very interesting symbol. 
swirling spiral-like pattern that forms almost like a triskelly, triskelly Celtic knot. Mm. Um, but as you look oh, at it wow. and try and trace it with your eyes, it never quite lines up the same way. And in fact, the more you look at it, the more it kind of drives you a bit crazy looking. It's almost like a um, uh, an impossible shape. It doesn't. The, the lines don't always look in the same spot. It's very weird to look at. The strings, no longer metal, now seem to be woven from golden threads. Oof. Nice. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well. So that happened. Um, Lyra is doing well, but I suspect there's more at play than what she's letting on. Wouldn't you agree, Jin? There is a lot of questions. First things first, she told us. Um, now, Lockie. Yes. Actually, no, we shall deal with that later. I'll give you a quick rundown first. That, okay. that, that is a conundrum <laughs> in and of itself. Um, nice. So it's just quickly the, the, the sort of notes of the thing. Um, I think what we've gathered is that if we bring Lyra through that portal, other things will come with her, namely from the Feywilds. Perhaps so even that- the Archfey themselves. Potentially. So I think what we've gathered is maybe that might not be an option. Another option that we could do is um, sort of something to channel Lyra's soul. She said there was items we could find, but we could, that was all. It was pretty cryptic. I guess we'll have to she, she, maybe... She yes. used you as a uh, as an example, Lucky. Because you're yeah. a, a construct with a soul. We could potentially create something similar for Lyra, but yeah. I, like I a couple forged. Potentially, yeah. She she said that the power within Shana still is viable. It's still there. But she mentioned that there were, there was a way to channel it to make it more um, to, to make it more deliberate and more focused. We would have a better uh, chance of succeeding, or at least bring her yes. back. Yes. One way or another. What, what, what would happen with her um, material self, though? As far as I'm aware, the wish skill bell can either bring Lyra's soul back here, or it can give her a body. Not both. Not both. And so so I think. Yes, yeah, so that's body. exactly. Provide the body. Summon her with the with the, the summoning ritual, but if that's not an option, I'm 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 confused. I I assumed that Lyra was in the Feywild, and that we could bring. She's actually more of a spirit. So mm. you would know from last time speaking to Yerveth that she she's she's kind of the, the Feywild is the closest plane that she is adjacent to, but mm. she's not really there. She has no corporeal form anymore. The only reason mm. she's there is because when her body was separated, the spell that did that shunted her to a random location that I rolled on, and she's okay. now trapped there. Right. Damn. Well, that's so, the could it, it could have been so, so much worse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that definitely changes things. So, she would yeah, It was a d20. The seven hells took up wow. seven of hers. The elemental wow. planes took up another four. Wow. Elemental planes took up another four. Yeah. So, right. it's the wish spell all over again. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So okay, okay, okay. So, so that's 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 yeah, that's Wait, one thing. I'm thinking. Lucky. Yes. If we have some sort of vessel for her, and presumably we're saying that she would want to use. Um, Shana has a wish spell, which can either bring her soul back or create a body for her, or some kind of something for her to go into, um, and then. The ritual would bring her through, but we don't want to do that, do we? Because anything in the Fey Wilds, the Fey is going to come with her. I think the independent yes. ideas. Independent ideas, not bad. If we had a vessel already made, yeah. maybe the wish spell would put her into it. What's the idea? I think? So, there's a few people we can ask. We can ask like Griswold, and maybe he has other friends that specialize a bit more in. Creating vessels. I'm not. Look, this is this is above yeah, me. Oh, no, you know, I just had that thought as well. Very well done, Mira. We know somebody who deals with vessels. Perhaps we can find something that's already. We, we just dropped him off. Damn. 
a dude, I will a say dude who makes zombies. We just dropped him off. They are dead bodies. That's the thing. I just want to put they are dead bodies, but if we find fresh. one that's very fresh, fresh. and not damaged, uh, and I, not I, dead. I have a feeling. I have a feeling um, with with their religion, it would need to be one connected to to um, Lara, or they're not going to. Ooh. They're not going to want. Well, maybe somebody else's plus that's, that's kind of a perversion of his uh of his that is that would be yeah. as well, well and it's a disrupting the natural way of things i'm gonna like, tell ask. you for free i'm gonna tell you for free yeah. shivers and the priests of more sacris not huge fans of vessels being used in this way because you're you're taking yeah. unless you could find one of unless you could find Lara's past vessel which is currently yeah. occupied by shana <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but he has said, but he has said that they've had multiple vessels before. Yes, yes, he has for the one soul. Is... However, here's yeah, here's, it's, it's here's the kicker. Quite... Lyra has been sealed in a gemstone. Yeah, with Shana for years, for millions of, of years, yeah. hundreds of years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just to save yeah. you guys some time, I'm going to say Leosin says this and goes, "Ah, oh, but haven't weren't you sealed away for so long?" <laughs> just to help. Yeah, you. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't so think I'm too far down that track. Plus, I think you have a okay. comment that can go okay. pretty fast. Um, another another thought then. Um, while I was while the giants were around, more of the giant forge were created. There's the possibility that we could create. I suppose in this case it would be a fey forged. If <laughs> I thought that again. <laughs> <laughs> Is it sad that I've already got two of the racial traits already in my mind? The second he said it, wow. like time slowed down, and my brain was like, <laughs> "Here we go." <laughs> here's connection to the Fey, and then here's the yeah. I was like, "Oh wow, yeah." I might, I might have fun with that. That was funny. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> I might need to redo a uh, character art for Lyra. That's a fascinating idea. I mean, we could try looking into it. Well, we do have a number of artifices and very powerful wizards now. Mm, it's true. There could be a few options. I guess we have a lot of research ahead of us. Well, Yosin kind of oh, you guys, not me. Looks for a second and goes, <laughs> you know, I heard tale of a flesh sculptor. A what? See, now that, that's promising. Yes, that there, were, there were rumors. Ominous. Well, I, yes, I'm not. A little lie. ominous. I but... won't sugarcoat it. Yeah. Azua and I, it was one of the things that we were going to look into when we first arrived here. Because, I mean, we didn't know what we were supposed to be looking for. We knew that there was a great danger. And when I first heard about this during my connection with the Harpers, I thought, oh, that sounds a bit, it's a bit spooky. But I had a bit of a look into it, and um, I, they do um, less intense things than I thought. They, they, they've been involved in the creation of some various types of golems, and... Um, They've been trying to create artificial life. Hmm. So well, like a flesh evil. golem. Yes, flesh golems. Uh, Interesting. That's. Well, we have a lot of things to to look at. We're actually not that far options. from. They're in Dromethion, the capital of the elemental states. Ah, oh. it's a Ganassi. <laughs> they, they are a Ganassi. <laughs> I should also mention when Lyra was talking about the energy that she can see, there's a large gathering of energy in Palin. Like, uh, I, I shoot a glance at Mira at that mention. Well, it's is it the, isn't there like a... Wait, do we actually know there's a gate at Palin? We do, don't oh, we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mira we found that out like last session, right? Yeah. 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 Well, it kind yeah. of like all came together last session. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the seeds that I sowed back episode. in like episode five. Episode one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we do know, Yerva, that there is a gate for the summoning ritual in Palin. Mm. So Palin is probably somewhere where we need to go very soon. But if we're in the area, I guess we could go real quick and chase down this Lyra lead. I suppose we do know that they can't really do much about the ritual since we have the mask. Yes, and so that we is, have zero. Yeah, that does. So, that gives us an advantage. Things. I do have one quick thing though. Lockie. Yes. Lyra told us something very interesting. Now, as far as we're aware, you've had that that core within you this entire time that we've since we've met you really. Yeah, this one. Shh. Yes. 
Now, she said something really <laughs> quite peculiar. She said yeah. that the ranger from the council meeting, what was his name again, Yovis? It was Dale. He's the one that gave us the call, and you've only had it for a short time. Yes. So, could you sort of help us with this discrepancy? Like, I, I'm I, missing something here. Yeah. We're all, I think we're, me and you have definitely, like, we've, all, I think maybe all of us are missing something. Yeah. Well, well, you, you know, you did just come back from the Feywild, and time does all kinds of strange things there, you do realize. Uh, like, you lose memories, like, all kinds of things go crazy. Except this isn't something I remember either. Inside check. Yeah. Insight check. Insight check on who? Lockie. <laughs> deception oh, check. Oh, Lockie? Lockie, blatant funny. deception check. You're flat out gaslighting. Yeah. Come on. Nice. <laughs> we all know it's yeah. yeah, I know. But... Unless it gets a nat 20. That's still an 18. But... It's still an 18. Oh, my God. <laughs> two, zero. Oh, no, two, zero, four. So, yeah, two, two total. You have a 21. Lockie is lying. Not just <laughs> lying. My passive he's, insight he's picks that up. Flat out, he's yeah. flat out. Yeah, passive insight picks that up. He's, everyone's he's, stuff. Everyone's yeah. passive yeah. insight picks that up. Even me. Like lo- a, par- a part of Lockie's head opens up, and like this text goes across, like deception <laughs> mode activated. <laughs> no, or like Lockie opens with deception open bracket. I've had this all along, guys. What are you talking about? Deception. Close bracket. My own. I'm just gonna say something. All your insights. It's a little bit beyond. Lockie's not just lying. He's fucking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, That's yeah. what I was going to say next. I was like, oh. and it's not just this that. Is, Lockie's this trolling. Is an attempt at humor. Is that possible? <laughs> Lockie's grown a lot. C- come on, come on, Lockie. Okay. Thrilled. Do you guys recall? Wait, hold on, hold on. Was that a, yes. was that a joke? Did you just goof? <laughs> Perhaps. Are you oh, crazy? I am proud of you. Look at you. Look at you. Look how far you've grown. Normally it's always been me doing the other way around. Bravo. All those little little retroactive upgrades have caught up with you. You're finally <laughs> capable of comedy. <laughs> All right. <Jesus>. Wow. <laughs> and you're almost capable of Thorn Whip. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, wait, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Continue, uh, Michael. Okay, okay. Do, do you recall back in the tower with the large, you know, the really big um, the Sam Thomas? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember how I disappeared and then reappeared again? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, what actually happened, I didn't want to confuse anybody because it was a bit of a situation. What actually happened is I fucked with time. Um, that's what those large <laughs> things did. And it sort of created this bit of a wibbly wobbly. So I've got this in my chest now. But yes. Was that the only thing that changed? Uh, pretty much. Are you sure? <laughs> um, are, you, are you sure though? I think you should be, would be probably pertinent to tell us. You did also mess about with time. And that... Only a little bit. Oh, only um, a little and bit. And then when I realized that it wasn't going quite as expected, um, it, to be fair, in my defense, even though you do not remember, we all agreed to try. And I was, I was, I was the one that stepped forward to give it a go because I was afraid of uh, adverse effects, and rightly so. I should have been. I lost about thirty years, which is kind of nothing to me, but that's okay. Um, Lucky, I've just realised something about that thirty years. Yes. Do you remember a certain lich who had a um, <gasps> a power over you? Yes. Oh yeah. Does that reset? Is that gone? Well, oh, I'm going to have to have a really solid think about that because. Potentially it has, and that's that actually screws me up a fair bit. <laughs> I'm gonna have to think about that. I just it oh. just occurred to me then. I was like, yeah, oh. yeah, because oh. if he's if he's been transplanted along the um, Diodorus, like the, the, the if you if you're doing like a, <sighs> if you're doing a timed cake, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're doing yeah. a time log, then it yes, is. yes, yeah. then Sorry. yes. No, no, no. <laughs> I know, I know. He te- Diodorus, wouldn't you technically have no memory of us then? If, if no. That... So so Loki. Yeah. So Loki's his physical form. Was uh, okay. re- rewound, but Loki doesn't just have a. He's not just a physical form. He has a soul as well, and that soul is what bound him to the Matrix. So that his identity and his knowledge, his personality and soul, is bound to that Nexor node now. And then his body was reassembled around that in its state from thirty years ago. Yep. He's now he is now that he is now that Nexor node. Loki's consciousness is now stored inside that. 
Yeah. So I guess it depends everything on else is a shell. How Diderus works. Then. And that's Just the mind cute. body dualism problem. Yes. Wow. Yes. So, so it, it, it knocks into another problem, and Lockie will explain this while I'm talking at him. Yeah. Is um, in that moment, <laughs> my consciousness and my uh, soul, I suppose, were the basically the eye of the hurricane, and everything's spinning around me, and that includes my body, and that included the time. Um, but then once that was reassembled, it had to re yeah technically both. Uh, well, uh, once that was um, reassembled, it had to come from a zero point. The zero point being my memories. So I actually remember not having the next little note in my chest, um, but here it is, and and a, and a not a copy, but another version of the next little note is appears where this was, which actually is good because that was weighing on me. But... So I found loopholes for everything. My takeaway is, is fuck with time, and something will happen. This is far beyond my comprehension. I'm just going to take a walk outside and breathe in some fresh air for a bit. I'm going to need to read some, um, read some Kant philosophy and try and wrap my head around. <laughs> I'm going to actually need to sit down and like have a real think about this because, because how I've written the node, the way the node has bonded to you now, Loki, you, and this, this is going a little bit behind the scenes, a little bit behind the scenes, and I'm happy to do it because this is really cool. And you can kind of see how I think as a DM. Yeah. Um, you are not the same entity that you were. By being bonded to this, right. you are now... Th there's more here. Like, your soul is different. You are no longer the same entity. By being bonded to the next one node, you are something a little bit different now. So technically, yeah. as I have written this, you don't yet know if Diodorus still has influence over you. Yeah. Also, and, and in... in um... Oh, that's going to be so spicy. Diderus is going to be so pissed. Just to make a confusing that's situation way worse. Get out of big just to make a confusing yeah. situation worse. Wait. Do you remember oh. how I came about the Nexal node? It was Diderus that made me pick it up in the first yeah. place. Oh. So it's yeah. actually but wait, a would, paradox. Yeah. But would Diderus yeah. even know? Yeah. Well, that's the problem he because Loki. No. He so, so no. Well, he wouldn't Diderus can see he possible would. futures, but by Loki touching that, by going back in time. Lockie oh. moved out of Diodorus's vision. And I, and I had this very clearly written down. Like, Diodorus can only right. see cause and predict event yep. and response. But by Lockie touching the hourglass, that's kind of fucked everything up for Diodorus's future vision. Because <laughs> yeah. no longer is Lockie acting on cause and effect. Lockie has effect and now cause. His timeline was briefly reversed. So I'm going to have to actually... That's actually worked out to be really interesting. So, Di yeah, so Diodorus oh wanted God. you to get the core, but there's still something else he needs you to do, and he can't make you do it now. This is That's really, funny. I'm going to have to have a think about this. So, Diodorus is like, off in his tomb in the middle of the jungle. You just going, literally, as soon, as, soon as, as soon as the timeline re established itself, Diodorus in his tomb just sits up and goes, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that. I am going to. I mean, obviously, this is behind the scenes. Your characters don't know this. Actually, yeah, Lockie, yeah. no. Lockie, you feel ever since you came out of that that time loop, it feels lighter. You That sense, it, you'd almost gotten used to it. The sense like you were being watched. It's gone. You no longer have that sense anymore. You no longer feel like there's eyes watching over you, strings attaching you to some invisible puppet master. You feel free. You feel conscious and alive and aware and making your own decisions, free from influence. You do feel different, markedly so. <laughs> um, wow. You, you know, your characters don't necessarily have to talk about this. Just, I just, that, yeah. Oh, fuck, that's going to be, I'm going to have to have a sit down and think about how Diodorus is going to deal with this. I actually genuinely don't think there's anything he can do about this, actually. Very I think, juicy. I think this might be a... That's right, that's a loose That's a loose thread that is cut and now off to the narrative winds until I can find a way to tie it back in again. That's interesting. All right, that's cool. Um, please, uh, Lockie, carry on trolling the party. So you, you, were say, you were saying about the node is how it's now... Yeah. You, you were built around it, essentially, is what you were uh, doing. Yes, I was... And it's I was, your body from 30 around. years ago. Yes. So, so in reality, your, your memory of me is a memory created by this event. Um, this 
is part of me. It is who I am. It is, it is me. It, it, it's, it's not even an it. I am me. Um, but it wasn't always that way. In a different, in a different way, in a different timeline, in a different version of this, it was something that we, as as a party, had found on our adventures, and I had um, experimented with it and incorporated it into my person. Right, but now it's 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 part of you. It is you. It is me. Yes. Okay. I'll be honest. I'm still a bit confused, but I, I that's great. That's, that's okay. fantastic, Lucky. Very good. And you're sure there was no other side effects of mucking around with time? Well, I might have fucked with Diodorus, but that's really? yet to be determined. <laughs> Do we remember? You will remember Diodorus. That happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, determinism goes backwards. Determinism goes backwards. The other day. You still, you still, everything, every, all of your memories are the same. The only thing different is that Lockie's now always had this core. That's the only yes. thing that's different. Okay. All right. Okay. Look, a lot has just happened. Yes. Um, I feel like we should get back to the Lyric part of the conversation. Can I? Can I actually, on that note, can I ask, was Jin and Yerveth there the whole time? Yeah. And Jin played yeah. this beautiful melody. All of you heard it, and more importantly, all of you saw the harp when he was playing, changing okay. slowly from the draconic <laughs> form into the Fey form. So Not they didn't realize. Yeah. yeah. Just Sorry, just quickly. You also all saw Yerveth bawling his eyes out. You also saw Yerveth crying. Yeah. yeah. But not, not bawling his eyes out in, in the real world, just a, a few tears, just a couple tears, of tears. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just yeah. a few tears. <laughs> um, okay, so they didn't not actually like openly out. weeping. <laughs> I, I wish he was there. It would have been so funny. Yeah, we, all right. We, Yerveth was uh, openly weeping. <laughs> and like, and like gross crying, like mucus coming out his nose into his mouth. And no, no, no. Okay. Well, were, were, were they asleep? Yeah, they seem they... they were not rousable during that period. Were we just like in a trance, like yeah, yeah, in a trance. Yeah. Yeah. doing elf things? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Faith, things. doing faith things. Faith doing faith stuff. Oh, yeah, faith yeah, shit. Seems like it. Um, faith, faith gang. Faith, faith gang. <laughs> okay, all right. So lots of possibilities. I think it would be good to go and see if we can follow up on this Lyra lead because. I don't think it would be... I think it sounds a bit risky to try and bring her through the portal. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but my first thought is to try and keep it closed. I don't want to bring anyone through. Mm. I, I second that. I think we disrupt it and bring nothing through. I, 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 I agree. That makes sense. I, w I was thinking perhaps we, we needed to bring something through, but if we can avoid that altogether, then that would be my preference as well. Yes. I don't know. I was going to ask Balthazar um, and Lockie and see if we couldn't come up with some sort of mechanism or a um, sabotage. Sabotage. I, I, I guess we need yes. to understand what yes, that's Jim, <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but continue. No, I was going to say, I think we, maybe we need to understand this ritual a bit more. If, if, if it starts, is there a way to disrupt it? Um, or if it starts, is it kind of like we can't yeah. do anything about it and we need to decide on what we need to do? Because what's, what's, our, what's our plan B? If, if we had to pick something to come through, what would it be? Well, definitely Lyra, yeah? Well, um, even Lyra said that that was a no-go. She was like looking at us like, yes, bring us through. And then she just wide-eyed just staring at us with this like expression that was like, no, don't do that. That's so I don't... Terrifying. Yes. It was almost like we were talking to her and she was talking to us like, well, probably best not to bring me through the portal. And then suddenly like that, she, she switched. She was like, oh, yes, bring me through the portal. This would be great. Completely 180'd it. Why? I mean, was it because... That is, well, that's what... The moment... That was when Titania sort of arrived. Just up just yes. before that. Right. Which is interesting because, I mean, she seemed pretty fond of you, Jin. You need to make sure you keep those... You need to keep, keep an eye on that. Look, I didn't pledge myself to her. 
I am I'm not about that anymore. I'm my own person. No, I'm, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite proud of you actually. That was quite a, oh. that was quite a, you did quite well there. I thought. Well, thank you. <laughs> Just sort of like sort what? of lovely. He, he loves being praised. <laughs> what? She did oh, well, say. But... She did say if anything happens to that loot there, that you will lose your powers. Yes. So let us let that not be the case, right? I promise no more fires around you. <laughs> and I light my finger on fire. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and I That's certainly so, won't. I thought I'd try away. a joke as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was. I certainly bravo. won't crash the airship into a mountain with you on the. Yes. Yeah. I mean, at that point. I'll betray you all the tear mat. Oh, perfect. Oh. I think at that point, <laughs> there's probably worse things. Um, can I inside check that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting joke to go for. Of course, you can inside uh, check that. <laughs> Natural 20 wow. for 31. Oh my god, Yerveth. Uh, Lockie, oh, eight. Lockie eight. I mean, part of you, maybe, maybe your humor receptive module's not fully online yet. Part of you's like. Hmm, that is in my calculations as a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yerveth, natural 20 for a total of 31. Mira, <laughs> is... Mira, is any part of that a joke? What does humor always hide? <laughs> it's oh. the truth. <laughs> Whoa. Only a deep seated fear of the truth. Yeah. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Oh, wait, so it's in like, it was a joke, but. You're sort of like stemming from a little part of you that's behind it. Yeah, you might get controlled or something to betray us. All right, yeah, but yeah, it's eyes walk onto you. Yeah, Mira's scared that this is going to happen, not by her own choice. She doesn't. You can tell she doesn't want this. This isn't something she wants to do, but she's scared it's going to happen without her decision, without her agency. She's scared that this is a path that she has no control over, and at the end, it's really only one outcome. And that terrifies her. Would that be fair to say, Claire? <laughs> Bang on it. All right, no. cool. <laughs> yeah. Yerveth gives Mira a very, like, knowing look. Doesn't say anything at this point, but just kind of... Just sort of slightly nods a little bit. Is in, almost in, like, a little bit of disbelief, but just kind of... Okay. That's um interesting thing to say, Mira. Whoa. whoa. You don't actually think there's any truth to that, Yevith, do you? That was just a joke. Just a jest. No, no, not at all. Just a joke. I oh, think no, we should get Lyra back. Hun- Definitely. Definitely. So, <laughs> what I've gathered from that is that everyone here has stakes. And one of mine is obviously losing my powers and such, but like, like Lewis, and like you were saying, crashing into the mountain, I think that would probably be the least of my concerns because I could be dead. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm sure there's nothing that can happen to you after death. Well, well, I'll, well, I'll come to it. I'll come to that when I when I get there. That's fair. There is there is one other um, possibility we need to discuss about the portal. My eyes look at uh, look at Shana real quick. You would be tempted to summon Varus through the portal, would you? Oh. I mean if i run out of options and i can't come up with a way to get lyra here that portal is the only thing i can think of and you guys know for damn sure i'm going to try if i have no other options i can't just leave her there i understand and at least you're upfront about it look i'll be honest i'll I'll help you through nearly anything to get lyra back and like we'll we'll, we'll do that we'll try our best but i won't um, definitely won't be on board for bringing Varys into this world, but I think you're just definitely still looking at bringing Lyra through the portal as an option two. That's a last uh, resort. Say Lyra can't come through the portal, there's, you know, either the Fae are there or some other option. Hmm. And if it comes to it that the only option of getting Lyra back here is to have Vir- Varys be on this plane, I mean... Can anyone come up with a better idea? I would say this. Oh, sorry, Lucky. What were you going to say? Could we summon the giants back? Because by the sound of it, the problem with Lara coming back is Lara is not enough to take up all of the power of the spell. So the Fae would come with her. 
but it sounds like she would take up some of the power of the spell. So if we were to summon all of the giants, then so would we? Power of the spell. Would That's we assuming have to... the giants are awesome. in the same location as Lyra. Right. It's location based. We would have if to we... move Lyra somewhere to where the giants are to then bring them together. I, I'm talking about the ritual. Just to bring the giants back in general, right? Just to bring Even. the giants back in general. It doesn't have to bring back a deity. If you bring back all the giants, maybe that's comparable. Do we want to bring them back? I don't know nothing much about them, to be honest. They're just I remember wives' them in, tales. I remember them as people that opened up their world to save millions. All of your forebearers are here because of their kindness. So I, I need a. I'm going to need a quick check from Lock. Uh, from sorry, not Lockyer. Yeah, from Owen. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> the so look obviously like Jin wouldn't know much about the history of giants, but like Jin, you, what you know from your time in the Bard's College, history was never your big area of no enjoyment. So you probably bludged those classes and played hacky sack in the comments. Yep. Um, yep, perfect. You, <laughs> what you do know <laughs> is you know that this world was originally the giants. You know that other races came to Nostea through the portals that the giants created and that the giants allowed them to stay. The giants opened up their opened up the world and allowed the other races to come. The first three through the Eldar races were the elves, the dwarves and the dragons. Right. They all came from different places for different reasons not much more that you would know from that you know that those first precursor races the eldar races the elven gods um damir sehanin korolon melora they became gods when the elves came through they were primordial beings who offered themselves to the elves and became their gods so they were empowered by the worship of the elves and so changed the elves who worshiped them the dragons brought their gods with them Bahamut and Tiamat were physical entities, dragons that came through the portal with them. Um, and for the dwarves, you don't really know much about the dwarves. You know that they had a, a primordial being who they worship, uh, who's now, now a deity, um, but probably not a huge amount more than that. All of the other races that have come to Nostea were either offshoots or sub-races created from mm. those original precursor races or have come through at later points the ganassi were elementals who were brought here when giant tech was being experimented with after the ruin and that giant tech malfunctioned and wiped out an entire elven city and brought the um G ganassi into being the the release of elemental magic triggered a change in anyone who was within 10 miles of that and turned them into the ganassi or that they were oh, wow. and humans yeah um that's crazy yeah, Arakokura came from the elemental plane of air. So, so everyone on Nostea, except for the giants, is an immigrant. You've all come from other places. Hmm. The giants are the only real native inhabitants of Nostea. And, and they've, they've never been they've never been portrayed in history as like evil tyrants or anything like that. Or they were just history to, to even welcome yeah, to even welcome people have a lot in on like the giants. The giants are. Uh, what you would know from the stories that you tell, the giants are, there's no giants featuring in any of the stories that you would tell. They're always a yeah. tragic figure, something right. that is lost, a, a remnant or an indication of, of a time now lost to history. They're never really cool. at the forefront of any of the stories. You, you wouldn't know much about them. I'm just trying to like, yeah, I'm just trying to get my gauge on how I would react to like Lockie's like suggestion. And I think from this, like, I wouldn't be too. I wouldn't be hostile towards that or anything. I'd probably almost no, be like. You wouldn't really know. I wouldn't really know. I'd probably be more inclined to believe him, because he is obviously Giant Forge knew them. So going back to sort of talking with Lockie again, um, as, as you bring it up, I'd probably be like, um, yeah, like not my forte, but um, you, you're way well more versed in that, and I've, there's never been any mention of them being. You know, nothing bad or anything. Like you said, they brought in people to save. It's actually not a bad alternative. Uh, by all, by all signs. In any case, artifact of theirs. Um. Shall we pay a visit to this first sculptor then? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't well, mind. I mean, options really? are options. I think it's a good option. I would 
Hmm. Yes, I think we're in the area, so if we could yeah. do this, we could then not have to bring anyone in, really, if we could help it, but that that provides another interesting thing. If we do bring Lyra back, and then we are sort of in the position where we have to bring something in, do we then default to the Giants? We could. I still think I would prefer to close it. We don't know what else could try and get through. If it, is, it really is a race to Nastea, the last thing we want through is maybe Hadar. I, I, I probably... I, I, I agree. I think closing it would be... Because yes. then we know that nothing can really sort of come through and threaten this land. Yes, no primordial yeah. dark From the power, from the portal. Uh, please. Yeah. If, from there's, the portal. If, if there's a way to permanently shut it down, that probably would be preferable. But the thing is, is by the sounds of it, maybe there's more than more players at here than we thought. And if somebody has means to open it up and get it through, then... I should say something to all of you. I didn't actually say this before, but we were told by Lyra that other other players are very aware that they can bring in other things. Other than it's team not just they, us and the cult. It's not just our, us that is aware of this now, that we could bring sense. something else. Other parties are at play that know about this as well, so well, that, there that, is that's... a lot more coming to the party. Like who? Well, that what we Lyra mentioned that some of the gods have started to become more active. Yes, oh, cool. Lysander, uh, goddess of the sun, apparently has interfered a bit and given some blesses, blessings, wow. and encouraged some followers. But um, she did mention other gods, but that was the only one she actually mentioned by name. Hmm. She definitely gestured to the Archfey. So that's already two parties that we can sort of align with. Like that's two, like not align with, sorry, but like sort of connected to. But there could be others. Mira, you say how? I'm not quite sure myself. That doesn't make any sense. The gods, she said that the gods were told not to interfere anymore. They made a pact that they wouldn't interfere. But some of them are still meddling behind each other's backs. So you would all know from your history that with the the ruin and the sealing of the betrayer gods, a pact was made among the prime deities to to not directly interfere because their interference was catastrophic. The, the mm. world was reshaped. Whole cities, whole people just wiped out with the release of raw magic. And that chaotic magic is still affecting the world to this day. There are some locations in the world it is very dangerous to go because that magic is still active and it still can have very weird and wild effects by getting too close. I, I, will, say this, I will say this, as the last remnant of the giants I do not want the gods to come through. There is one being on Mastea, it seems, that has a memory of why they were locked away in the first place. And if I'm the, if I'm the only one here, the whole the, the legacy of the giants, their legacy is sealing the gods away from the rest of us so that we can survive. In a way, that is, that is that is everything kicked off with the disappearing of the giants. That's not, yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, the ruin. Yeah. If the, if the giants hadn't vanished, the ruin might never have happened. So maybe we should bring back the giant giants if we have to bring back anything. I was just going well. to say, there's one other option. That is, if there are other players involved, and the this ritual is targeted based on materials that were related to the person they're trying to summon there's also a possibility that some of these existing materials meant to summon tiamat could have been swapped out and you know replicas or whatever to summon this other party um it's possible Mm. so it's definitely that's definitely that could happen so on top of everything else we need to I don't know. I think replacing, you know, just one item and then assuming, oh yes, it's all good now, might blow up in our faces if we're trying to retarget the spell. That, that's a it good seems point. like it's going to be a lot when we're on the ground there and the cult are there doing their ritual. It's all going to happen very quickly. There's yes. going to be guess it's, it's, it's going to be quite the melee. So I agree. We need to know exactly what's going to happen in this ritual. So even going to find Lara might give us a bit more time to do some research. Hit the books. I'll get my library card. <laughs> you are way too excited for this. What? We haven't been to a library in ages. 
Um, well, yeah, Jin, we Jin just... looks a little. Jin looks a little bored at this, like thought of like hidden the books. You said we haven't been to a library in ages. We were only in the Lux or. Yeah, but there was no with... books in that library. Remember? <laughs> no, I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about her library. Oh yes. <laughs> we sure. didn't um, get a chance to read them because you know the. Uh, yeah, Elias. Elia's library. Elia's library, yeah. But there was this well, in the Wizard's Tower, there were so many books. That's basically a library. Oh, that's true. So, you've got a really is, I've already started looking books. at those. Yes. <laughs> what, what do you mean? We've been to like so many libraries. Crates. Crates. You've, got, you've, got, like, you've, got, you've got like 300 books on the airship with you oh. packed up in crates. Mira has you already a library right now. got my Dewey Decimal System out. Yeah. She is going to order the books. Don't you worry about that on the yeah. trip. Yeah. I'm yes. Order, order, order. Um, actually, now that you mentioned that, I did mean to talk to you about about the the books that you've recovered. I, I had a bit of a chat to Griswold while you were doing your weird music-y thing, um, and he thinks he could sell them for quite a bit of money. He's given me a bit of an estimate, actually, for what he thinks he could get for them. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. He thinks that total, it's worth about 30,000 gold pieces. What? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh. So... Yeah. I'm thinking some upgrades to the guild hall. I'm thinking maybe some, if there's any items that you were looking for, maybe we could try and set aside some Well, time for that. Th this whole, this, this whole um, airship is paying off. Hmm. So I think it's time that we, and I sort of flex a little bit like that. <laughs> I think it's a bit of time that we sort of pamper ourselves. You know, what we could do. Are you saying, are you suggesting shopping spree, Jin? That I am. We are in the tavern with all the beer that we've got now. We also could, it. We could invest money in a Drake breeding program. I look at um, Eleanor. How would how would that <laughs> tell her? That's an interesting oh interesting side God. hustle. I told you how yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at he looks at Eleanor and then looks at Loki and looks at Eleanor and then looks at Yervith and then looks at Loki. <laughs> um, um, yeah, Yervith, do you, are you down for that? Is that something you'd like? I'm not, I'm not down for that. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, Leosin, how are those dragon eggs going? Um. He sort of looks around. Are we are we talking about that openly? Well, within. Oh wait! I didn't know I if everyone Drake knew about eggs. that or not, but everyone does now. Yeah. So the two dragon eggs that you have back in the, well, that you had three, but one Oops. of them was stolen. Remember that they, they, they? Yes. They hatched, and that. one of them was taken. <laughs> wait, do I know this? Ah, uh, I'm not sure no. if you do. You might not have been I told. I don't think the Earth knows that. Quite, this. A, quite a while ago. Oh. Quite a while ago, the party recovered three dragon eggs and uh, had hired a furbolg. Um, Lucius Salamats to look after them. Um, we did, no, we did. We introduced you to Lucius. Yes, you did meet Lucius back at the night. But not the eggs. Oh, not the eggs. Not the egg. oh, so Lucius, oh. Lucius, he hatched all three. Um, an old friend of yours, um, Emmerich, came and took the black dragon. Um, yeah. And, and as I imagine, has eaten it by this point or raised it in his own to ride into battle. I don't know. One of those options is true. <laughs> Um, the other two, the other two, Nusha's actually, um, Nusha's actually was planning on, on, now that they're getting a little bit older, was planning on taking them back to Veloxur and trying to I reunite them was, with their kin. That was the plan. Yes, he had, he had left the Night Hall and was on his way there. In fact, oh, I, that, that fills originally, me with relief. Yes, I thought we were going to try and meet up with him while we were in Veloxur, but things went a bit crazy and it didn't end up happening. So I, I imagine mm. he's maybe still on his way there. Because Ilya knew about them. Right. Elliot yeah. Uh, yeah. What a, what a shame. Uh, well, the I mean, Drake they, breeding they... program. I I I really don't think that's. I I mean, look. That's because you've you... got proficiency in animal husbandry. Animal yeah, husbandry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's a different husbandry. I think it needs to be a little bit more magical. Um. <laughs> Are you not saying animal husbandry is animal husbandry oh, is magical? magical process. No, 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 you're not. But I think he's talking about this. Yeah, but <laughs> there's not going to be much romance when it comes to Loki. Oh, yeah. So you say I can be a very magic fellow. Really? No. 
<laughs> so, I'm I'm thinking, um, head to head to Dromethion. Hmm. Maybe see if we can gather some information. Oh, actually, I have a Harper contact in Dromethion. Why don't I reach out and see if they can they can track down news of this flesh sculptor? And Quick question. Can... Yes. Who is that? Who's that contact? Uh, I would I would know them, of course. Oh yes, Gloria. Oh, we're not going. <laughs> 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 yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist throwing Gloria in there. Um, it's, oh, not, it's not Gloria. You know what? Gloria's, when I think Gloria about is it, in Palin doing something much more important. Oh, I, had, I had a chat with Ali recently. I was like, oh, for the final, for the, for the last episode, would you want to come back oh, as Gloria? <laughs> oh, could yes, you please? yes, please. I will try. I'll keep trying to convince her. Don't worry. Oh. If if we all ask her really nicely. She had she had a condition um, coming back. Look, if she's like hilarious. busy though, she doesn't have to come. Like it's fine. It's because she's got horse riding on a Wednesday. Night. <laughs> but if it's ever not on, like for example, they close over Christmas and it lines up just right, the Christmas special Gloria comes back. <laughs> oh, wow. Ellie, yeah. Sorry, Alice. Where is Dromethion? To have a bit on Dromethion is uh, in the elemental states. It's the capital of the Ganassi uh, lands. Mm. Which is I see it. It's the yellow, yellow one. Yellow underneath the uh, yellow one. Ocean. Oh, it's like, oh, it's all the way down there. On yeah, the flight map, we're uh, currently but, flying over it, right? That's, like, I mean, the... you guys, this is Zonthal's tower that I'm just pinging now. Uh, I'm still over yeah. Chiari on my map. Yeah, uh, so I like, thought we were. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Our, our ship is near where we are, but Our ship is still in. um. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'll move yeah, the ship yeah. to where you guys actually are. Sorry about that. That's better, okay. yeah. We're still cool, cool. like, yeah, we're in Chiari, so. There you go. An air of decency. I like that I've actually literally got the ship's name there. That's hilarious. What do we What do we know about Dramathion? Has anyone been there before? Uh, Azura and I went when we first arrived. We, we went to go check out the elemental states. Azura obviously is quite proficient with the element of fire and, and, and light. He, uh, he and I, as I said, we were looking into this flesh sculptor. We, we both traveled there to see if we could do some investigation. But um, we were, I mean, what we found indicated that they weren't a, a major threat and we, we abandoned it. Um, Look, it's, it's a wonderful city. The Ganassi are, are, are very friendly and, and, and very hospitable for the most part. Um, I, I, I quite like I quite like Dromethion and the elemental states in general. Um, they work on a democracy, um, unlike uh, unlike Oshia. Um, so it's quite refreshing for us being from the Feywilds where that's an absolute dictatorship. Um, <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's quite nice. And great food. The Ganassi are oh, excellent chefs. Oh. Mm. Well. Yes. Um, but yes, sorry, no, we're meeting up with Ozalor, um, one of the one of the Harpers who uh, is on a on a very long term mission uh, in Dromethion. They're, they're there to gather intel and provide information back. There there is a Bard's College in uh, in Dromethion, uh, a, a much smaller one than the one in Palin, but one of our I one did of our I did go there once for a uh, excursion. Oh, right, so you must yeah, have like an internship kind of thing. Yeah. It was good. So I, I had a mental Re- religion in school. I did. Uh-huh. It's it's such such. Just... <laughs> Look, I don't know if I actually went there, but I'm just yeah, going to no, say you, I did. I'm going to say I'm going to say, did, I'm gonna say that I probably I'm going to say I skipped out on, on it a lot though, and probably did a lot of stuff like just like roaming the city. Oh, Jin, Dromethion, that's, Dromethion that's, um, that's, is a great place for those who are into experimental alcohols. The Ganassi oh. are very very um, creative when it comes to the culinary arts. Um, they, yeah, nice. very very creative with food and drink, and there were a lot of very interesting um, drinks that you would have tried on Dromethion. You probably attended the lectures, but you would have been hungover and not really paying much attention, or drunk. No, in the afternoon. So you didn't. I probably. Get, yeah. At night, there might have been some interesting t- tales of someone getting you know, a bit too corral, like you know, doing some carousing and yeah. some carousing. similar sort of scenes of what happened in Drifthaven. The, the city of Dromethion and, and the whole Ganassi um, area, the elemental states, uh, is very focused on um, technological advancements. So most of the cities there, the buildings are made from metal and glass. Um, it's a very, wow. in terms of the D&D setting, a very futuristic looking area. Um, cool. The uh, canals weaving through every section of the city. Um, the, a lot of the buildings are actually have lower sections made of stone. Um, there are passageways through the air for the air ganassi to, to fly across um, and areas of greenery and trees as well and then massive forges where a lot of the fire ganassi work 
Um, in Nostea, the Fire Ganassi are known for their ability to create incredible works of uh, metallurgy. Not quite the same as the dwarves. The dwarves are known for creating incredible weapons and armor. The Ganassi, items of um, <coughs> excuse me, items of power, wondrous items, jewelry. That's more where the Ganassi kind of come in, and their connection to the elemental plane Perfect. gives them that ability as well. So, if you were going shopping, not a bad place to go. Shopping. Yes, I think I might be in the market for some jewelry. Yeah. Ah, yes. Definitely need some things. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so, so if we've got if we've got thirty five thousand, um, if we give each of you five thousand, that's twenty five thousand, and then ten thousand to help upgrade the night hall and and. I, hope oh, I thought we had thirty. I thought we had thirty thousand. Thirty-five. Yeah. Even better. <laughs> oh, you could give us the thirty thousand. That'd be six thousand. You could take five thousand. Uh, I I could do that, or I could do the job I'm paid for uh, that you employ me for as the administrator yeah. of the guild and actually administrate. And I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking at, we, we've had a request come in, Azua's been dealing with this. We've, we've recently been looking at recruiting a, a party for this. Um, some some strange goings on around a, a ruined town, in Dower Bridge. So we're hoping to recruit some new people for that. We'll, we'll need some funds for that to help find and fund that expedition. Huh. Huh. Anyone, us. any per people of note? I, I wouldn't know, I've been, I've been away with you guys. Once we get back, we'll know a bit more. Perfect. Well then, off to uh, off we go then, I guess. To draw Methion. I'll send a message ahead, see if we can get some information from Ocelor. Hopefully there's some uh, some information that we can have in advance. I, I mean, it would be good, otherwise I guess we can always always go there and, and I'll try and meet up with Ocelor in person while you go about and do your, your various uh, shopping trips or, or investigations. You said you want to look at a library? I believe draw Methion has a good, has a good library. Good memory. Well, fantastic. I think we're I think we're ready to go. In that case, I will quickly chat to um well, I guess I guess I'll have to chat to the crew, let them know that we're heading to Dromethion and they'll get some get some time off, and I'll get the airship all sorted. Uh, unless there's anything else you need from me. No, I think we'll be all the ocean. Again, Admiral Dobby Ocean. Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I, I try my hardest. I know. <laughs> well, if you need anything, I'll be in the bridge. I'll, uh, I'll see you all soon. And with that, Leosin heads upstairs. Uh, it's going to... <laughs> yeah, so it's going to take you about two days to get to Dromethion. Um, during that time, you have downtime. I think what we'll do is we'll talk about what we'll do in your downtime, and then we'll wrap up the stream for tonight. So, what would each of you be doing over those two days of downtime? Hmm. Feel free to just jump out, otherwise I'll, I'll go around and ask you all one by one. Okay, um, well, Lockie will want to help Miro read through as many books as possible because we're going to sell them, then we're going to need to either oh, remember yeah. them or what have you, try and get some information. And in between doing that, it wouldn't mind um, tinkering a little bit more with his um, elemental, uh, elemental defense, elemental shield defense, yeah. Lockie, could you please roll me an arcana check? Absolutely. I've been keeping I've been keeping track of your progress, so let's get another Arcana check and let's see how you do. The last one wasn't so great. Oh, neither is this one. Oh man, what's going Just on? Wait, wait, wait. Can I throw him? Can I throw him a Bardic? Would you allow that? Mm, your is, call. It is after it has been rolled. However, mm. this is an ongoing thing that he'd be working on. I will allow you to throw him a Bardic. Lucky, you can roll a D10. Oh, okay. It. it is now a D10 being level 12. Oh, D10. You can now roll a D10 yeah. and add it to it. Don't roll one. 15's not too bad. Not bad. Average. Lockie, you're, you're making real progress on this elemental shield. You don't think it's going to take too much longer for this to be up and running, for this to be ready to go. Um, there's probably only a few more key pieces that you're missing. Something mm. that would be very handy for you to locate and find at some point in the future is a gemstone to help hold the energy that is incoming and capture it and then diffuse it so for fire you will need probably a ruby yep. or lightning you'll need um i think it's amber from memory is the gemstone connected to it i've got these all written down i'll send them to you there will be yes. you will, if you can try and locate gemstones that will help hold each of the energies that you want to be able to redirect that mm. would be a very worthy addition and if you could get that there's not too much more you need to do cool 
Well, if we were going to go elemental states, maybe I'll find something that's uh, already attuned. It's an elemental. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Sure. At mm-hmm. least to the four elements, you definitely have... Um... Mm. Well, actually, yeah, because air is not really uh, an elemental damage, so to be lightning would probably be the one lightning. associated with that. Um, yeah, and fire, earth, lightning, thunder, would earth. Probably be thunder. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe force. Yeah. I think about yeah. it. I think about it. And I'll let you know. Okay. Um, perfect. Lucky. Yeah. Absolutely. Mira, you're going through the books. Going through the books. Trying and to find out everything again. That's for sure. And I also have also when I was communing with Balthazar's paper magic as well. So that's in the back of my head. So learning about it, but also how I could possibly sabotage it as well. The ritual. Yeah. Okay. Balthazar's also helping you with this. Balthazar's also keen to go through the books. He's still on board the ship. Balthazar will also help with this. Mira, could you please roll me a history or a Karna check with advantage? Cool. Okay. History or. So Lockie's giving you advantage by helping you with this. Balthazar's giving you an extra bonus on top of that. Oh, oh yeah, extra bonus because I was, I was going to do Flash of Genius if, um, if Balthazar wanted to do the Jane, advantage. Don't worry about it. Balthazar's got that covered. So 14. Five. Advantage. 14 for one and I don't know why it's making me do that now 11. not so good 14. But, but Balthazar gives you a bit of a hand he's going to give you a plus 3 to that take it up to 17 nice. Balthazar's a researcher you go through the books Mira um, there's a lot of information here on various forms of magic as you are not a wizard a lot of this doesn't really make a huge amount of sense to you but Balthazar seems really excited about this and, and a lot of the tomes you begin putting aside to sell directly to the Unseen University in Oxenford, knowing yeah. that the wizards there would be very keen for this knowledge. Yeah. Um, That's how I help, is that I know about the people that yes. will buy these books. The wizards that's, actually interested in the books. And that's the charisma, right, for the sorcerer. <laughs> that's the charisma, yeah. that's yeah. the sorcerer. So you, yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot of this stuff goes right over your head. There's a lot of talk about um, accessing the weave and how the strands of the weave need to be manipulated in certain ways. That's not how your magic works. Your magic goes, I think something, I point my finger and fire goes. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, that doesn't make a huge amount of sense to you. <laughs> However, some of the books talk about, I would say, like anatomical and uh, naturalist style studies, almost like the early European explorers in our world would do the uh, the oh, lithograph cool. books yeah, yeah, yeah. anatomical cool. drawings and um, cool. the one I'm thinking of is uh, Ernst Teichel, The Forms of Nature that's the one that comes yep. to mind, google that wow. shit it's really cool um, that, those kind of, and you find a number of folios that have been written by a prominent naturalist of that time who has drawn in beautiful detail all the myriad forms of life that he could find during that period of time and interestingly some of them you know to now be extinct no longer around some of the animals the plants some of the magical creatures things like pseudo dragons pseudo dragon you've never heard of pseudo dragons on nostea they've been lost with the room as far as you're aware on, on nostea at least um fairies fairies haven't been seen on nostea for a very very long time since through it so this, i mean there's kind of an excitement here yeah but then also a sadness realizing how much is lost but then there's also a bit of excitement again because there's new things now tabaxi were never around prior to the war tabaxi are brand new nostea like they, they're they post-ruin arrivals to nostea that's a bit crazy um so yeah there's there's a lot of uh, these books in particular you think would be very 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 worthwhile to a collector or to museums um places of, of learning. The Unseen University would also probably buy these. They do have a naturalist department, and a mm. biology department that would be very interested in these as well. So it's up to you where you want to send it. But mm. I kind of want to that... send it to the Unseen University to pay for Barry's tuition. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Barry's tuition is definitely paid for by these books. Cool. As I said, it's $35,000 worth, 35,000 gold pieces worth. Barry's tuition fees per year come to about 150 gold pieces as a scholarship kid. Cool. Oh, wait, you don't yeah. know that yet. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> maybe we'll give him a little, a, little, a little edge. Yeah, give him a little edge. Donated by <laughs> Tempest. The te- this is the Tempest Adventuring wing of the library. Yeah. 
guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to the Tempest Tower. <laughs> oh. Tempest Tower. Okay. Ooh, All right. So nice. that's one of the things. That's one of the things you get is a tower named after the Tempest. Get done. I like that. Um, so, some of the things you learn, Mira. One of the books, clearly written during the ruin or just before, talks about demons and devils. Creatures which have not been seen on Nostea since the ruin. Very, very interesting. This book describes a lot of information about the difference between them, how to recognize them, what not to do when dealing with devils. <laughs> Don't deal with them, basically. Yeah. Um, and fascinatingly, it also depicts in brilliant graphical artistry the seven oh sorry the nine layers of hell it's nine layers of hell isn't it yeah the nine layers yeah, of hell yeah the nine oh, layers of hell i said seven before that was a mistake there are nine layers of hell. i know what you meant it, it is your world though so you could you can make nah, it seven if you wanted there's none. Nah, there's none. There's none. that was that was a, that was a, a goof yeah the nine layers of hell starting with avernus at the top and moving all the way down this book i mean you you could learn a lot from this Another book of interest that stands out to you is a study of sorcerers and sorceress magic and the origins of it. And more importantly, the ways that that magic can manifest later on as they tap into it more and more. So those who are drawing on the power of a draconic ancestry, as they grow more and more powerful, get access to very draconic abilities. They get access to a lot of very powerful spells. And it describes a number of these spells that you can expect to have access to, to learn as time goes on. Very interesting. Yeah. Mm, mm, okay, that's cool. That's what you've learned during that time. The ritual itself, looking for things to disrupt the ritual, you learn a bit about generally how to disrupt rituals. And Balthazar talks you through this. Balthazar's happy to sit with you. Any questions you ask, he answers them patiently, no matter how off-tangent they, they are, because as a sorcerer, your knowledge is innate. It's not, it's not knowledge of magic, it's just, oh, I just want this to happen and I just make it happen. Yep. Um, Balthazar goes through the, the, spell, the ritual that you're describing. Uh, this, this is going to take uh, quite a bit of time. They're going to need a number of very highly trained magicians to, to be to be cast at this spell for, for a long period of time. Mm. If you could disrupt the casters, that would, that would certainly prevent the spell. If you could uh, mm -hmm. remove the material components before the spell is able to be activated, well, the spell just won't happen, just fizzle. If you're powerful mm -hmm. enough and you, there's enough of you and you're all using... Um, dispelling magic or counterspelling you could maybe pre prevent the spell even even taking place the ritual even happening there are many different ways to to cancel spells once they've begun those are the ones that i could think of off the top of my head okay yeah that's oh, what's that what's what's that sorry oh apparently you just kill the spellcasters oh well, that's a bit that's a bit brutal but i believe is that your cat that suggested that mr. Sibley, yes he just said yes mr Sibley suggested you just kill the spellcasters I mean, well, he's a cat. You have to, you have to excuse him. He's a cat, yeah. He's a yeah. Cat. It's a very cat-like way of dealing with problems, I think. That, I mean, that is the solution, and I suppose that would be for the, the greater good. Yeah. Well, I mean, indeed, indeed. Yes. What about if one of those material components wasn't willing? Material components wasn't oh. willing? components of the ritual. I, I, I'm not sure of many spells that call upon the consent of the material components as part of well, the spell. Okay. Normally it's the consent of the spellcaster. Okay, I'm getting confused again between components. You explained it before and I got confused. Um, normally inanimate but... objects, my dear. No, normally inanimate objects. Okay, well, what if someone was a sacrifice in the ritual and they weren't willing to be part of that? Well, un unfortunately, some some spells do require a willing sacrifice. Uh, some not so much. Some actually require an unwilling sacrifice. I, I remember a ritual to the god Baal. No, was it Bane? Or maybe it was Merkel? Well, one of the three uh, specifically required uh, an unwilling sacrifice. Ooh, okay. Ooh, indeed. Not an option, then. Hmm. And if... Say it was like this one, this one here with the summoning. Um, oh, yes, yes, this one's to summon woodland creatures. This is a lovely spell. Yeah. I like this one quite a lot. I would like to see that. I like woodland creatures. Oh, 
yes, I can I can summon some rabbits for you if you'd like. Would you like some rabbits? Yes. Um, Maybe not too many. Oh shit. <laughs> Balthazar, Balthazar concentrates, begins casting his magic, and you watch as he very, like recites this incantation, pulls out his spell book and looks through it, begins like making preparations, and you're like, wow, this is some complex spell casting. And then he clicks his fingers and about 12 rabbits jump up oh. from around the books and begin like sniffing the books and like wrinkling their little noses around. Mr. Aww. Snibbly immediately arches <laughs> back, looks, and then pounces on one of the rabbits. And as he grabs it, ah. the rabbit pff, disappears into nothingness. Oh, oh. oh I forgot. I f- yes. Um, uh, yes. Mr. Snibbly, if you could just take. And the cat pounces again, takes out another rabbit. Oh, dear. Um, I pick one up. <laughs> Lucky also picks one up. <laughs> you're not there, Lucky. Yet. You're in the hole doing your magic shit. I was shield. helping. He was All helping. Right, fine. You can be there. You pick up a rabbit. All right. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Mr. Snibbly then goes and takes out if the cat takes out each of the each of the oh. rabbits as as it can each time. Oh, oh. It's okay. they're not they're not real rabbits. They're they're um they're they're fae spirits that we we can conjure across. They take a form of, of rabbits. They're spirits from the fae. What? Yes, yes, yes. Spirits from the fae. They a physical form. Well, well, well the, the, as they come here, they're given physical form by the spell. Really. Oh, yes, that's, that's how the spell works. Could that spell be used in a bigger, for a bigger creature? What sort of, yes, of course. Well, I know, I know Conjure Fae Spirits, which is another, it's a higher version of that spell where I can conjure a, a spirit of the Fae and it can take on a, on a Fae-like aspect. Hmm. I mean, like a, even bigger, like a, like the spirit of our friend who's stuck in the Fae Wild. Oh, you have a friend stuck in the Feywild. Oh, that's awful. Well, what's her name? I'll, see, I'll give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we spent, like, legitimately an hour trying to figure out how to bring Lyra back. And he's just we'll like, spend... I'll just do it. <laughs> no, we've sorry. spent literal months trying to figure out how to no, bring No, like, legitimately back. months. I'll give it a go. Okay, okay. Uh, look, before we, before we try that, I think we need to do some more research because... First of all, she's also a spirit related to Shana, and I would like Shana to be involved in this decision making. With her consent. Shana's a snaky one, yes? Yes, yes, she's our business snake. Business snake, um, yes. <laughs> um, but also, would there be a risk of an arch fay, I think I've got that right, coming through, through this. Oh, spell? with my little spell? No, no, no. <laughs> Um, arch, arch fair are a lot more powerful than, than what I can summon. I, look, I'm, I'm very flattered that you think I'm capable of such magics, but um, that's, that's a bit beyond me. Hmm. Okay. Look, I think I'm going to go and talk to Shana in the next two days cool. <laughs> with Belsons. In that case, then, um, Shana, Mira comes and tells you this in, in, the, in the interest of not going for too long with this. Yeah. I don't want to get your hopes up too much. Um, Mira <laughs> tells you that this is an option. Very exciting. You come down. You provide a very detailed description to Balthazar of, of what Lyra looks like and, and how she is. Um, he then casts the spell. Uh, it does not bring Lyra. Lyra is not a fae spirit. She's a spirit in the fae wilds. This is the problem with wizards. You know, you think... You've got it, but then there's a technicality. You know, you, you understand, Shana. It's just all a feel, right? It's just the feel of a thing. This is too technical for me. I'm sorry. Technical I'm, wedding. I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I thought, I, I, I hoped that would work. I, I'm very sorry I, if I got your hopes up. Mm-hmm. What was that, Ali? We missed that. I mean, oh, anything, anything's worth a try. Um, and hell, I mean, it's still a better idea than half the stuff I've tried already, so. But yeah. Balthazar, yeah, Balthazar, with your skills, you need to be careful. Careful? What do you mean? In this world that you're in now, no one has these skills. And if there really are as many players as we think trying to unlock these skills to bring back whoever they want, you're going to be in some danger, I think. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure I am not the most skilled wizard still around. It's been a number of a number of years, as you say. Magic will have gone a long way. I, my, my rudimentary knowledge will 
Surely I'm not the most powerful wizard here. I, I look forward to meeting some of my, my new colleagues at the Unseen University and seeing what they uh, what they can do. I imagine I'll have a lot to learn. I look at Shana sideways. <laughs> the side eyes are back. It's, mm. See, the trouble is, is um, uh, magic, it had a bit of an upturn uh, after you went to, had your nap. Um, and then it's okay, it you could had... say I was turned to stone by Zonthal's jealousy. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Zonthal turned you to stone. Um, you know, and you're right, magic did continue up in, to the point where it didn't. And then it took a massive nose dive, and a lot of the knowledge that has once been collected is now forgotten and gone. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to help uh, at least reclaim some of that lost knowledge. And it will be my privilege okay. and pleasure. What I'm trying to say is, please be careful. I mean, it's... Oh, I don't need to be careful. To I've got Mr. Snibbly to look after me. And he points down at his gun. <laughs> Mr. Snibbly, you did a wonderful job at keeping him from being locked in stone. <laughs> like, he's just sort of trying to... Like, hey, dude, you were... Uh, you've been uh, stuck Mr. in stone Snibbly before. Mr. Snibbly turns around, points its bottom at you. Tail lifted <laughs> up. And you know our cats do that. <laughs> and yeah. then wanders back over to Balthazar, climbs up his robes and curls around his neck. You know I'm right. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm very, um, I'm very sorry that I'm very sorry that wasn't as uh, more helpful. My apologies. No, thank you. Thank you for trying. Yeah, Any time, uh, Shana. That only takes up like an hour of your time. Uh, what would you What would you be doing for the other two days? Definitely, at least like another sort of hour would probably be spent grilling um, Jin and Yerveth on. How's Lyra? Like, what's she yeah. like? Where is she? You know, all that sort of uh, stuff. Yeah. I'll and then say the rest then that of the you time... get that from them. That's, that's yeah, so we yeah. would have told you that, like, she shifted a bit more to, like, a bit more of, like, mushrooms and stuff and a bit more decay. Like, she's been looking at the whole she's been circle getting into of life shrooms and stuff. With that, with that mama yeah. shadow there, <laughs> like, keep an eye on her. She's been getting into shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> As a druid, wondrous druid. mysteries of the of the mycological sciences. Mm -hmm. Mycology is fascinating. So, it is very fascinating. <laughs> but um, I think um, Shana would probably be spending like a lot of the rest of the time trying to make a little bit more sense of this flesh molding spell. Like if there's, you know, she's sort of like, all right, if I'm going to go find someone that knows more about this, I'm going to learn as much as I can about the spell, get as much control as possible so that, you know, if it's if it's going to work, I'm going to give it a, the best chance of working. Yeah, can you roll me an arcana check or a nature check? <laughs> Both are neg ones. A great <laughs> But that that oh, makes sense wonderful. though because your knowledge of spells is is innate as a sorcerer. Five. Yeah. Oh. Shana, you're gonna need some help with this. It's it's yeah. just not magic that you are familiar with. This isn't with. an ability check, is it? What was that? Sorry. This isn't an ability check, is it? Yeah, technically yeah. it is. That's an ability Can check. Can I use magical guidance and yeah, use a sorcery point? Yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, it's a good. Actually, this is probably the Routine. one to use. Yeah. Minus so one, that, so 13. Oh, so 13. Yeah, okay. No, that's fine then. So 13, that's not too bad. Yeah, 13. Shana, this spell is going to require... It's complex. Like, you, you don't know a huge amount about it already. Reading through some of the spell books that Mira finds and sets aside that talk about various types of transmutation magic on living flesh, it, this is complex. This is going to require someone who has really practiced with this. If you get even the slightest thing wrong... You stop transmuting flesh and start transmuting other things like air or fire or water, some of the basic elements, or even some more complex but basic materials like iron or steel. They don't play nicely with the human body or with the with biological materials. Turning a uh, gram of flesh into a gram of air, from what you can read in here, causes some explosive problems because the volume now has to rapidly increase to fill the space because a gram of air is going to be a much, much larger volume than a gram of flesh. <laughs> so uh, you very quickly realize that this is something that you as a sorcerer and a warlock 
you are very not made for this spell. This is wizard <laughs> stuff. This is nerd shit. Like this is, this is nerd shit. precise mathematics. This is also known as nerd shit. <laughs> nerd shit. This is precise mathematics. This is an intricate and detailed knowledge of the molecular structures required for this. It, this is complex. You immediately know enough to know that you can't do this. This is not something that you are going to be able to do at the moment. This is going to be years, decades of Shana dedicating herself to this craft to be able to cast this. You're going to need to get someone else to do this. Someone who is trained in this. Someone with very high nerd stats, like intelligence or wisdom, for example. <laughs> You've got to make one back over at Balthazar. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Balthazar is a possibility. Balthazar is yeah. a possibility. The flesh sculpture. Mm. The flesh sculpture, girly. The sculptor. Yeah. I think she might introduce oh, yeah. the idea, like just sort of feel it out and just sort of see where does he stand on this kind of topic. Ooh, um, transmutation was uh, never really an area that I was particularly, um, particularly gifted at. I'm, um, I'm more focused in abjuration. That was more sort of my, my area of expertise. Um, uh, but to be honest, I could probably maybe learn about transmutation. I, I mean, I know the basic facts. It's just not an area of speciality for me. <laughs> I was about to go try and learn some a bit more about it. Though. I was thinking maybe if you if you're gonna stick stick around, that is, if you can, if you want to learn with me. I mean, this is it's really isn't my strong suit. I think you'll have a a much stronger chance of it working. Yes, I, I can take a bit of a look. Uh, I've promised Mira I'd help sort through all the books for the next couple of days. But after that, I can I can have a bit of a have a bit of a look over and see what I can learn. And um, I'll uh, I'll get back to you. If if you can find someone who specialises in this, that's going to be a lot better than me. Though. Just I I, I I understand that you're looking for someone who already is proficient in this magic. Uh, they're going to be a bit better than I am at this. So I'm just going to put that out there. Um, transmutation's tricky. Uh, you can get things wrong and and. They go wrong very quickly if you don't know what you're doing. I like abjuration where it's like it's fireball, pff, fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Until that one goes wrong and you set the building on fire. Yes, well, that's but more yeah, evocation, no, I, I guess, the fireballs. But um, yes. Just backup plans, you know. Um. Anything else that you do in your two days, Shana? I don't think it would take you two days to learn that you're not going to be able to learn this. That'll probably take you half a day, and then you sit there going, oh, "Fuck." <laughs> Yeah, probably just exited, exited, uh, brain does words, just yes. dread, just pure dread. She makes sure the, um, the tool is still in the engine bay and yes, all of is. that yes. is just a, oh shit, I don't know what I'm going to do. Easy peasy. Jin, what would you be doing for those two days? Practicing <clears> on <throat> your okay. beautiful new heart? No, okay. I have ideas. Oh. He looks down at his body that is... Certainly not as armored as it used to be. Yes. Um, he will use his new magic teleportation, so he can use the one on the ship too. Mm -hmm. But he's actually going to go back to the night hall to that one, and he's going to talk to. Um, so I would say you, the, probably, actually, you may as well use the teleportation circle on the ship to get back because there's a link teleportation. Yeah. Nexus. Right. That's there. what I was thinking. Yeah. So you may as well. And I can just go back. Yeah. Mm. So um, I'm literally going to go to the Jin. blacksmith at the thing. Jin, you. And do you communicate this with anyone that you're heading back to the Night Hall? Or do you just? Oh, I would probably say maybe to like Leosin or someone or anyone who's right. around. Yeah, okay, let hey, Leosin know. Hey, just um, <laughs> heading off to the Night Hall real quick. Uh, I just have some errands to run. Oh, I I didn't I didn't know you could I didn't know you could do that, Jin. That's uh, uh well, say hi to Azur for me. Ah, oh, will do. Very good. Um, do you do you need anything? Do you want to give me anything to take or? Um, here, here's 10,000 gold, if you could give that to, uh, he, ah. then, he then, like, holds onto it. I promise you. I won't. Come on, we've had chats about the ship and stuff before, and yeah, you so know that, uh, when it comes down to it, I'm quite shrewd. No, you are, you are very, you're very shrewd. You are, that's very true. It's a good uh, word to describe you, Jin. Yes, here, take the 10,000. If you give that to Azua, I've let him know. Okay, that, uh, I shall I give him the $5,000, the, the 5,000 gold you gave me. Gold, the 10,000 gold, Jin. <laughs> <laughs> gold. Yeah, seven thousand five hundred gold for. Jin, ten, <laughs> ten, ten I'm gold. joking. It's I know, okay. Yes, I know, I know. I know. But if you keep repeating the wrong number, I'm scared that that's what you're going to remember. Okay, fine. 
nine thousand gold. <laughs> Do you know what? That's close enough. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's okay. <laughs> um, Jin, you step onto the teleportation circle. This is the first time you've ever cast this spell. You're a little bit nervous about this, but as you focus and concentrate, you can feel this is already connected with another location. You're not even having to really cast the spell. It's just using the energy within you to activate it. You can feel this is linked up to that location. It doesn't seem to be linked up to any other locations yet, just to the night hall. And as you begin summoning energy and cast it, you feel that sensation of suddenly dropping as if falling through empty space as your stomach rises within yourself. And then suddenly, boom, this blast of brilliant rainbow light, and you are standing in the night hall in Professor Griswold's study as Professor Griswold falls off his chair with you suddenly arriving, <laughs> not expecting anyone to activate the teleportation circle. And you watch as around the room, descending from the ceiling, or arcane cannons lower and begin pointing whoa, at the teleportation whoa, whoa. circle. Oh my god. Griswold, it's okay, it's what just you, me. What are you doing? What are you, what? Jin, stand down. Hi. Stand down. He clicks and the arcane cannons back up into the ceiling. Um, <laughs> Jin, what, what, what are you doing here? How, oh, how I did can... you activate my teleportation circle? Um, well, I can cast it now. Well, I, I know, polite isn't of you to let me know that. Oh, um, I only just sort of came across this quite recently, so apologies. Um, arcane cannons, very nice. Well, yes, we, we need some protections. I mean, this is a this is a protected teleportation circle. It's only linked to one location, but you can't. Oh well, thank God for that. Um, you well, be too careful. It was good to see Grizzle. I'll, well, I'll try my best to not surprise you as often. Oh, 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 um, what is that on your back? That looks very interesting, Jin. Ah, uh, this is the... I think it was called the Anstruth Harp. Ah, the Anstruth Harp. I've heard about this. It's a famous draconic instrument, I was told. But this looks very um, fame. I found out that it's actually fame. Apparently... Well, its origins are, anyway. Ooh, well, you you clearly carry the favor of a very powerful archfey with you, if you've been gifted such a such an important relic. Yes, Queen Titania, if that rings any bells. Oh, yes, I'm quite familiar with Queen Titania. Indeed, well, oh. keep her on your good you, side, Jin, is my advice. Did you have a bit of a, a tryst with her or something, hmm? No. Chris would be dark. Please, no. But as I, uh, <laughs> one of my journeys took me through the Feywild, and I um, had a conversation with Titania and Oberon. I needed access to one of their libraries. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Needed access to one of their libraries. Wait, did you find any interesting knowledge? Could oh, yes, lots, any, lots of interesting things. Could anything be tied into helping us bring back Lyra? I'm already applying all of the knowledge that I can at my disposal to help bring Lyra back. Ah. Well, I'll leave it in your capable hands. Very good call. Is that bag of gold for me? Um, this is for Azua. Shame. Could have used another 10,000 gold. Well, how about this? I'll talk to Azua and maybe he can give you some. Ah, he's told me I can't have any more for explosives. (laughs) Ah. Well, I must be off. I will see you soon. I have to pass through this way again. Are you, are you just going to be using my teleportation circles now, willy nilly? Is that is that what? Is, Not is what willy nilly. It look for me. This is big magic as well. This is I can only do this max twice a day. He sort of so, snorts a bit and then catches it and goes, "Oh, well then, I, I guess I'll see you twice a day." Excellent. <laughs> I won't, won't be using it all the time. <laughs> All right, I give him a wave and I continue on. Gives you a wave back and then bends back over this little device that he's working on. You can see it's a crystal that he's drilled several holes in and is shaping wires through the middle of it. Right. Well, as you I leave him space into the night hall, the floors have been recently done. No longer is it wooden floors, marble. The oh, walls damn, we, have been we are rich. Restained. <laughs> There are various nice. tapestries, plush couches oh, yeah. in the oh, yeah in the in the in the in the sitting room, and sitting in front of the fire, looking through a stack of notes, drinking from a a drinking horn is Azua. 
as you step downstairs, he sort of turns to look up and goes, Oh, Griswold, I... Jin! Oh, ah, hello, Jin! Hello. He runs over, sweeps you up into a big bear hug. How, oh, how did you get um, did, I just... Did, I probably sort of stand there like this back? a little bit. He didn't bit. tell me he was doing that, the sly dog. Um, no, I, I can actually do that now. Ooh, that's very powerful I magic, know. Jin. That's very impressive. Oh, just a tiny bit. That's very impressive. Don't let don't, don't anyone tell you otherwise. Very impressive. I want you to say it. I am very impressive. Say it. I am very <laughs> impressive. You are, Jin. You're very impressive. I uh, am a... Now, do you have... I, I, <laughs> I'm guessing that big bag is for <sighs> me. 10,000 gold? It takes it off you. Yes. Oh, but I think... He, okay, yes. Yes, thank you. Yes, I am... Um, I may have done some spending recently. Tucks the gold. No, no, I can see that as I look at all the marble. Marble as far as the eye can see. Yes, I, I, I had a, I had a wizard come in and transmute and, uh, and modify some of the, some of the decor inside. It's oh. very nice, isn't it? No, it, it is. A lot of marble. I like marble. It's, it's beautiful and, and white and pure like our souls. Oh, it's white marble, even better. As I'm squinting. That's what I think that's what Azul would say. I, I hope I'm capturing what a, what Azul would say in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, oh, it's, it's so nice that you're back. How, how can I help? What, what, what's going on? Um, are you guys all safe? I would safe? like to... Yeah, no, we are all fine. Everyone is top top shape. I was looking to talk to our blacksmith friend. Uh, oh, is it House? Is it Hows? Yes, yeah, Hows under the, the earth. Yes, she, she's in the workshop right now. Perfect. Well, I better get going. I shall see you before I leave, okay, Azua? Oh, yep, of, of course. Yes, talk soon, Jin. Gonna get through this blasted paperwork. Oh, never ending oh, at this point. Looks so f fun. I can't wait you for should hang out to with, get back. You should hang out with Mira. She would love this. I, I'll be... I, if Mira wants to take this off my hands, I'd be very pleased to hand it over to her once, once you've all finished saving the world. Well, always, yeah, I'm sure she would love it. <laughs> Um, as you head through down into the workshop, Jin, this has been updated recently as well. No longer a single forge with a few weapon racks and a slag heap and a coal burner out the front. It is now a whole blacksmith's forge. You can see there is an induction furnace that has been set up as well as a metallurgical forge, which is designed to alloy different metals together. So keep the metals separate Ooh, at different, different heats damn. and then alloy them in the center at a heat where they can mix together. Um, it is very impressive. Standing there, working through, hammering away at what looks to be a long claymore, uh, you can see Howl's Under the Earth, a tabaxi with um, very sort of desert uh, colorations, this sort of light tan skin, um, swept back around, almost like a very slight mane around her shoulders, dressed in just a simple leather apron, um, white um, tunic and uh, sort of darkish grey breeches as she's hammering away at this claymore. As you enter in, she looks up and goes, Ah, Jin, you have returned, and I see that you are no longer have your breastplate. I imagine you are looking for replacement, oh. yes? Yes, well, yeah, you do have a keen eye, don't you? I unfortunately I lost my... Yes, I unfortunately lost my adamantium breastplate. Something that was... And he sort of looks around a little bit, like, saddened. Uh, quite a bit of a hit to the wallet. I was wondering if there's any way at all you could help me. I can't really wear that type of armor anymore, but maybe like a studded leather armor or something, even with some magical properties. I, I don't know. I'll leave it in your capable hands, but I definitely need at least, the very least, at least some form of light armor. Yes, something a bit more stronger than your standard studded leather, correct? Something that can absorb a bit more force and provide a bit more protection is what you're after. It would be perfect. Hmm. I will have a look through. I, I recently have been getting into combining magical I items, combining effects from different magical items together. I think I might have something in mind for you. I can have it ready for you uh. in, say, two to three days. Oh, perfect. Well, um... If you could have it done in two days, that'd be even greater, because I do have technically two days of leave. Um, oh, but, um, yes, I'll, I'll leave it in your capable hands, and by all means, I'll stick around in the night hall for now and just sort of lounge around. Yes, um, of course. Uh, there are some materials that potentially you could help me with to make it much more uh, easy to put together. Oh, perfect. What do you need? I'm uh, looking for some metals that you would like me to use in the studded leather, if you happen to have any 
metals on you, perhaps. Maybe you have come across in your journeys uh, certain uh, types of metal that could be useful. Otherwise, if you have maybe some some armor or already existing that I could help transform into the studded leather. If you had any, you said the adamantine, adamantine breastplate is now gone. Perhaps you have some uh, other armors left in your possession that I could turn into. Um, you have damaged plate armor. I do. You do. I do have that in the. I have that in the bloody bag, bag of holding. holding. Yeah. yeah. No. I. I can, um. I'm sort of thinking there, stamping my feet a little bit, scratching my head. Ah. Oh, I bring out the bag and just a small little bag, and then just bring out this plate armor. Ah. That would do quite nicely. I see it has some draconic symbols on it. Did you perhaps get this in your journey to Veraxar? Ah, uh, that we did. Would you like me to keep that same kind of motif? Or maybe go for something a little bit more subtle? Or perhaps something reflecting the nature of the Tempest Guild, highlighting your membership with such an illustrious organization? You know what? Maybe something more subtle. Just because subtle. At, at the end of the day, even though I love theatrics, I am still at heart a, a spy. So I still am a part of a new method still part of, of the Harpers. So. so you go, you go. Oh, sorry, I'm just still a part of the Harpers, so they might, from time to time, you know, I'm definitely more aligned with the Tempest Guild, but I still have duties there, so I still need something that, you know, will sort of align with my spy work. Hmm. I have been experimenting with a new design of implanting metals, like a chainmail, into existing clothing. It makes the outer clothing or the inner clothing a bit heavier, but it disguises it completely so that it appears you are wearing no armor at all. Perhaps this is something that could be of interest to you. I will leave it in your capable hands. Do you have a tunic already that you would like to leave with me? Something that I could invent. It already is size to you, therefore it will make it much easier for me to make the armor to fit Oh, no problem. I start just unclothing You're myself. Disgusting. Oh, okay, yeah. Ah, um, <laughs> yes, very well, thank you. She takes it from you. Very good. Oh, don't worry. And then I pull out the, just like a general like clothes from like the, the bag. Like as I'm half, I still pretty much half naked, just wearing my briefs in front of her for a little bit and then switch. Very nice. Well, I will get to work on this and I will let you know oh. when I have finished. Um, Perfect. Get to work on that. Um, Jin, I will have to create a custom armor for you, but I will put it in your inventory. And I will, um, cool. Put you That's it, awesome. This is something I've been working on in the background. It's uh, oh. disguised armors. Nice. Sick. Uh, um, awesome. Sorry, just to finish it. Yes, go. Well, I'm going to spend two days there, so while I'm waiting, yep. I also have another spell. Um, it's a fourth level spell I took as a magic secret. Find Greater Steed. Okay. So I'm going to play you're around gonna... with that, and I'm. Yep. And go. I'm thinking I, I that I know you're do. it's probably it's probably going to be either like a griffin or a pegasus or something from the fey wilds i saw pegasus actually has a language sylvan so it could be like a fey pegasus or something along those lines yeah but absolutely. i want to yeah. see what you think if you wanted to do something a bit more custom to Jin, we can have a chat about that behind the scenes something different mm. and i'll let you know what other forms it might take well i feel like the fine greater seed could have come with like t titania's like blessing favor yeah. Yeah. so that's why now i can sort of summon this fey steed yeah. Basically, I just want to be able to fly around on it, though, so I can yeah. just basically just support spells. Yeah, no, perfect. I'll, yeah, we'll have a chat about that behind the scenes. Perfect. Yerveth, what would you be doing for the two days? A couple of things. Okay. Um, one thing he'd probably be doing is just trying to strengthen his bond with, with Eleanor a bit more, just more training, yep. more, um, yeah, just, you know, spending more time with her and just trying to understand um, that connection more. Um, but I guess... In hindsight, he'd probably just be reflecting on the on on the coming events, really, like you know, thinking about everything that's happened, thinking about everything that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, he'd be looking down at his at his arrows and his bow and thinking, "Is it strong enough to fight a god? Is it strong enough to fight whatever is up in the sky?" Like he'd sort of be almost like doubting his abilities slightly. Um, kind of, they're very, very, very self reflective. I think. Um, yeah. And then I guess as well, like also just reflecting on his time in the Fey world and reflecting on that a little bit more and the way it made him feel and maybe some some memories there sort of starting to start starting to come back a little bit. Um, yeah, just very self-reflective, I guess. Um, he'd also make note to speak to Mira um, 
based based on what she said before during that conversation that we had yes. and just sort of like take pull her aside and say i could sense there was some fear in you before i, I know that you were joking but i think it comes from a place and i just wanted you to know that whatever happens i will protect you as best i can i just wanted you to know that thank you yabeth that makes me feel a lot a lot more reassured but part of my fear is for myself but a lot of my fear is that i won't be able to control things if that happens i think you know what to do i think you've been in that place before i have and it pains me to find that my path may lead there again but rest assured i will make the call and i will do what's right I know it. Yeah. Alrighty. That's really it. Perfect. Well, that is a really good place to wrap up for tonight, and then we will come in next session as you will arrive at uh, Drillmethion, the capital of the Elemental States. That's a awesome. surprise. <laughs> not, what, not where you thought you guys were going at the beginning of the no. session? No, 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 no. Ooh, Ganassi, love Ganassi. Yeah. It's going to be great fun. I, I've done a little bit with the um, with the elemental states, but I was not also expecting you guys to go there too, so I'm going to quickly, uh, quickly <laughs> uh, expansion just before you guys get there so I can give you a nice little cool adventure there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming and joining us for our Tyranny of Dragons campaign. That's all from us tonight, but we will be back again next week with more Curse of Strahd on Monday night and more Tyranny of Dragons on Wednesday night. Um, this Saturday morning, I may be doing some God of War Ragnarok streaming. I'll keep you posted, but then after that, on Saturday mornings, it will be time for Pokemon with the team. You can see we get all four, all four of us playing uh, playing Pokemon together, which will be lots of fun. So... Until then, everybody, stay safe, stay well, and we will see you all again next time. Goodbye, everybody. Farewell. Bye. Bye. Bye.